Ndiye mwese tubabwira ko Mulems mwisanga abashitsi kimwe nabasangwa. Ndaza gusaba rero mu buryo bwo kugira ngo tumenyane aho twicaye nabo twicaranye dufate iminota mike ya twibwirana kugira ngo tuze kukomeza ibiganiro tuziranye. Murakoze murakarama ni minota 10 twibwirana aho twicaye murakoze. Hello, uh, Madam Babera. I'm sorry for the interruption. Uh, we all have this uh, flyer. Uh, there are two questions at the end. As we are discussing at our tables, we can answer the first question. Now I understand that some people do not work within the school settings, so you'll have to replace that and. Uh, Replace it with what and where you're working from. Thank you. The position you're holding at the place where you're working from.
Mwakoze cyane ndibaza tumaze kumenyana kandi turi bikomeze kugenda tumenyana ko ari abantu bice ku table zitandukanye tuza kumenyana uyu munsi rero uko twabukereye twaje kwizihiza umunsi mukuru wabatega rugori uh, the international theme for this year is gender equality for sustainable tomorrow. Njene chereje mchinyarugwanda, uburinga nire, ugameji terambere, liramji, yeju hazaz. Tujie ndeko uyumasturi kumwe nabarezi, nabarimu kazi, nabarimu, murugu ya gurugu kuima kaza ubu nire tukabikora tukwizihiza uyu munsi ndumva twafatanya tukagejuru tukizihirwa mu kumunsi bitubwira turabanyarwanda banyarwanda kazi nabandi bavuye mu ndukanye mishyu zacu ariko ndibaza ko twese dushikazwe n'intege imwe ariyo kugira ngo tukubake urwanda rwiza gejo hazaza abadukomoka bazabe ahantu heza kurenza uturi uyu munsi muri urwa gwego nterurangira nti rwanda rwacu tubyaya mabo cu azaguko rwanda jihugo cha tubyaya maboko yacu azaduko Guanda. <laughs> Karambe, 
Murakoze cyane ndabona mu itorero eh mba bari na ndibajwe ah Murakoze cyane no munsi wo kwiziza wo kwiziza akazi katoroshye akazi bashi bacu ba mama bacu ah ba aba gore bacu nko nabivuze inshuti zacu bamaze kugeraho kandi ni ntambwe bamaze gutera ni ntego bafite yo gukomeza muri rwo rwego eh ramba bera geto ni muri rwo rwego rero turi hano tureba aho bamaze kugera hari bikorwe bitandukanye tuza gukora uyu munsi twizihiza birimo no kureba ko twateze imbere mwari mu kazi kugira ngo inshingano ze azinoze neza uko bikwiye ariko atari ukuvuga ko atazinoza ariko kugira ngo aho gatere indi ntambwe yisumbuyeho ngiye kubasaba rero muri uyu mwanya ko aho twicaye ku meza zacu kwa ridufite ikibazo kigira kiti uh, what leadership role do you currently play in school and out of school for the people who are not working in the school setting we said we are going to replace our school with where we work from and uh, the positions we are holding i think uh, if there is anyone who didn't pick the role of a member on the table can try and rectify that for now so that we continue when we know each other on our tables because the following session we're going to recognize our special guests and uh, if i say special i think uh, everyone knows that is special in his or her own way uh, let us try to look into that if there is someone you didn't pick w w the role she or his uh, playing in the school or where he's working where she's working from please uh, look into that for now we'll take one uh, two minutes for that Murakoze cyane ndibaza ya minota ya kirangi intore Baracicari igihugu Intore 
ಇಂಜನಿಯರು ಮುರಾಕೋಜೆ ಚಾನೆ ಮೊರಿ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಬುಸಾಂಸ್ಗೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ನಿ ಮೆಟಫ ಇವಗ ಇಜಿಕೋರೇಶ ದುಕೋರ ದುಚ್ಚೂರ ಅವಂಬಕ್ಷಿ ಮಿರಾರೇರು ಕುಮ್ಮಜೆ ಗುಕೋರ ನೇಜ ಹಿಂಜ ಬಿಕೋರೇಶ ಮುಕಮ್ಮಜೆ ಗುಚ್ಚೂರ ರುಗುವಂಡ ತ್ಕಿಫೋಜ ಕಾಂಡಿ ಮುಫ್ತ ಮುಗಾಂಬಿ ಕುಬಿ ಕೊಮೆಜ್ ಅನ್ಯೊಂಡು ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಅಹಮ ಅಮಾಲೆಟ್ that he used to shape a uh, beautiful things and i thank everyone mostly our special celebrants uh, the women who have been shaping our future generation and have the intention to do that uh, as long as they live natin zerero nji kwa magara umuyobozi wange umuyobozi wacu i'm going to asha call upon uh, Dr. Herin to mention and ask our special guests. Please, Dr. The floor is yours. Thank you Mark. Um thank you everybody. We are all looking bright and uh ready to celebrate a very special day. So as Mark has said, my name is Dr. Herin Otieno. I am the team lead of the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences AIMS teacher I mean the teacher training program in Rwanda. And at this point I just want to first of all thank all of us for coming in time, being ready to engage. I want to emphasize that what we really would like to do today is to talk one to another so as much as we are going to have guests at this place a lot of the conversations we would really like to have is at the table so um when we are signaled to look at our menu for conversation we have some guidance questions whenever we are signaled to do that let's do that because we have deliberately mixed us in our in our in our table so that we can share life for the short time that we're going to be here But before we start officially um as I've been asked to do I'm going to recognize some of the very special guests that we have in our midst and as as Mark has said all of us are really special uh but we w- want to recognize some of the guests that have taken time to come and share this very special day with us and I know that we have guests from some of our key partnering institutions so I just want to mention the institutions uh and wherever you are just stand up and wave at the people for now so um one of the institutions that we have worked a long journey with right from the beginning of putting together um this program is University of Rwanda College of Education so i think Dr Leo you're here so please let's recognize you right at the back so thank you very much i can see somebody is right at the back and then of course dead and consulting with Rwanda Education Board so we have a representative from Rwanda Education Board please let's see where you are and thank you very much and then um we have our partner Mastercard Foundation which really the aim teacher training program is being implemented as part of a wider initiative by the Mastercard Foundation the leaders in teaching program So we are privileged to have a representative from Mastercard Foundation and would like to um recognize your presence so please let's see where you are thank you very much um and then uh of course uh we have friends who have joined us from other 
uh, institutions, and I know you are here, even if we do not mention you, please know that we are really privileged. But before I go on, I also want to recognize, because today is a special day and we'll be talking about that, I want to recognize the other universities that are here. We have Kibogora Polytechnic, also well represented all the way. Uh, thank you very much, Vice Chancellor. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have um, representatives from UTAB, uh, from Gishumbi. So are you in the house already? We're expecting the Vice Chancellor. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Um, and then um, we have representatives from our, our other partnering uh, institutions. Please feel at home. We know you are here with us because we identify with the same vision. We are workers in the same vineyard working towards improving uh, the quality of education. Um, I also want to mention a special guest who has been working with the Ministry of Education. She's passionate about education. She's passionate about issues related to promoting maths and sciences, especially to the girl child, and that is Dr. Christine. Uh, she recently stepped down from um, Ministry of Education, but she's a team member. Thank you very much, Dr. Christine. And then, um, I want to recognize the presence of um, members of staff from the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences. African Institute for Mathematical Sciences will be hearing from our um, Ames Rwanda president right after this, so he'll be telling us a little bit about that. But we have many of our staff members who have come together with us to appreciate and to engage with us because they work behind the scene. You don't see them in the field, you don't see them in the classroom, but they are part of the engine that makes sure that we can do the things that we are doing. So all members of staff from the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences, Ames Rwanda, and also at the Secretariat. Please, wherever you are, just turn and we will uh, give you a special shout out. So I can see Rana is just standing up. Anybody else? Yeah, so well represented. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. So having said that, I want to also mention that today is a very special day. It's a day of recognizing one of the things we'll be talking about is the issues of women leadership. Remember, we are just coming to the end of um, March, which is a special Women's Month, and we've had celebrations around women, and we postponed our celebration to today because our very special women, the female science teachers, were busy teaching. But I want to say that we are also, also very much privileged to have with us members of parliament, female members of parliament, most of whom have a background in education. So I know we have four of them in the house. So kindly, wherever we are, honorable members of parliament, please, let's see your presence and we all want to just clap for you and we, of course, will be recognizing you later. So thank you very much. So wherever you are sitting, you're sitting next to that member of parliament on that table, on that table, make sure you pick up a conversation with them. Because one of the things we believe is that today you are teaching, tomorrow you could be the next, at the next level. So having said that, thank you very much once again. I want to take this opportunity to invite uh, the Centre President of Ames Rwanda to make some opening remarks so that we can then move on with the celebration. Let's give a clap to Professor Sam Yala as he comes to stage. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable Minister of State in charge of primary and secondary education. He will be joining us uh, uh, soon. Honorable members of uh, Parliament, estimate guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences, Ems Rwanda, I want to extend my very warm welcome to all of you who are present to this celebration of EMS TTP Female Science Teachers. The teacher training program, TTP, represents EMS commitment to contribute to supporting the government building the mathematics and science pipeline by ensuring that quality STEM education is accessible to all our girls 
and boys. This is achieved, of course, thanks to the outstanding commitment of our teachers, including, of course, our female teachers. Today, we are celebrating female science and mathematics teachers across our 14 districts who strive every day to improve the learning outcomes of mathematics and science. We value a lot your contribution to nurturing the leaders of tomorrow. This celebration is a, a culmination of our International Women's Month. Full and equal access to technology and innovation for women and girls of all ages has been recognized as an imperative to, for achieving gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls. Equality women's and girls' STEM participation is also seen as a key contributor to filling the larger STEM human resource gap. With this year's International Women's Day campaign, Break the Bias, the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences, through the teacher training program, will do mentorship program to support a big number of female science teachers to rise into education leadership positions within the school and districts under the term Women in Education Leadership Positions for a Sustainable Tomorrow. Today, we have the privilege of having with us Honorable Bagumia Furaya Emma, Honorable Muzana Alice, and Honorable Mbakeshimana Chantal, who have been through the education sector and stepped up to become members of uh, parliament. We also have different leaders in the education sector, including head teachers, dean of studies, and district education leaders. As a fact, we will use the opportunity to unveil the first cohort of 42 teachers, awardees, who are beneficiaries of uh, the EMS TTP scholarship program, with whom 60% are female teachers. I want to thank the Ministry of Education and Rwanda Education Board for their continuing involvement and support in the successful running of the EMS teacher training program in Rwanda. I also like to express the gratitude of uh, our institution to the MasterCard Foundation for the valuable support in funding the EMS TTP program. Before I conclude, allow me to thank also our key partners who worked this journey with us, like Airtel Rwanda, Rwanda Social Security Board, KCB Bank Rwanda, and uh, academic institutions like Kibogora Polytechnic, University of Arts and Technology of Biumba, Mount Kenya University, University of Rwanda, and the Rwanda Basic Education Board. We really value your partnership and various contribution to advance women in science, technology, and innovation for achieving gender equality and other development goals. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your presence as we celebrate our female math and science teachers. Thank you very much. Arakoze cyane nyakubahwa Professor Samiala President wa Ames uh, mu Rwanda uh, 
kuduhikaze guhikaza abashitsi bacu nubwitangiye agaragaza cya AIMS garagaza mu guteza imbere uburezi cyane cyane mibare na science no gushishikazwa no guteza imbere mwarimo kugira ngo nawe ateri kirenge mu cyabo honorable ko yabivuze thank you very much samiala of aims rwanda uh, for welcoming our guests and uh, for the commitment to encourage our teachers and supporters uh, for their professional development uh, at this time i think it's better if uh, we continue with uh, from the president of aims rwanda then i welcome dr irene otien again aims uh, teacher training director to give her presentation doctor nyundowe Thank you very much. So, um, my next task is very simple. Uh, we want to have a conversation with our women leaders. As, um, as Professor Sam has said, we, we are gathered here for two main reasons, but under one big umbrella. Appreciating that we have been recognizing and celebrating women in the last one month. And one of the clarion calls, or the clarion call for this year's celebration was break the bias. So I am going to do a very simple presentation to help those of us who are interacting with AIMS teacher training program for the first time to get to know a little bit about the AIMS teacher training program. And then we're going to dive into some data to look at what is the current situation about leadership in our schools, especially in terms of gender. And then we are going to take the conversation to the panel to try and make sense of the data that will have been presented. So as I start, I'm just going to um, talk a little bit about the AIMS teacher training program. Um, my presentation will be up soon. But just to give a very uh, brief introduction, as the name suggests, the teacher training program is one of the outreach or one of the main outreach activities of the AIMS African Institute for Mathematical Sciences, an effort to grow a pipeline. So as Professor Sam may have mentioned, as an institution, we exist to promote maths and sciences and to ensure that um, as an African citizenry, we grow in our prowess and knowledge and capacity to use maths and sciences as tools for socioeconomic transformation. So our key, our key program is a master's program where we recruit students from across Africa in our five centers of excellence to go through a very special mathematical science master's program. But the question is, where are these students going to come from? So the AIMS teacher training program exists to answer that question. It is part of our effort to grow the pipeline. And the teacher training program Rwanda, we have one goal, and it really connects to today's celebration. Our main goal is that we want to see more girls and more boys leaving secondary school to pursue science-based courses. That is our goal. So we have been implementing the AIMS teacher training program since 2018, so it's almost five years. So it's really time to stop and check, are we achieving our goal? To what extent are we achieving our goal? But before I answer that question, I just to also want to just explain that how do we implement the teacher training program? Our activities are divided in four main pillars. Pillar number one is teacher training. So we have teacher training from all maths and science teachers in 14 districts. So all the 14 districts are currently represented in this room. So if you think about it, you'll think about from down from Rusizi, you come all the way to Kamonyi, Gishumbi. So a number of districts across Western, I mean, the four provinces. I think it's only Kigali that we do not have um, a school that we, are, I mean, schools that we are directly interacting with, but we still have teachers from Kigali that we interface with. 
Now, so we do teacher training program. We also believe that for our teachers to be able to effectively implement the pedagogical practices that we train them in, it is important to work with the other stakeholders to improve the resourcing of schools. So we also work towards improving the resourcing of schools. Number three, we also believe and we know from data and evidence from research that what we find with our students in our classroom is not just a factor of what's going on in the classroom, it is also influenced by what's going on outside the classroom. So as a result, we have a very critical pillar, which is um, the community outreach pillar. And within this pillar, we implement activities that seek to reach one, the general member of public, the general members of the community, the parents, but also specific programs that directly target the students with a view of impacting their belief systems and their attitude towards maths and sciences. And then finally, and very important, all these pillars are interconnected. As a research institution, as we implement our programs, we are always keen to track the evidence that we are collecting or the data that we are collecting. We're able to look at it against what we are seeing within our context, against what research is talking about within the context of STEM education. And then we're able to package this for evidence-based policy dialogue at different levels. And I always remind my teachers they are policy makers. So when we talk about policy makers, we do not just think about Ministry of Education. We start right from the classroom. As a teacher, they are policy makers. They make policies, for example, on uh, classroom norms, the classroom norms that they would accept, or how students interact and all that. So that is a snapshot of the AIMS teacher training program with the goal of seeking to see, um, to improve and to ensure there's an increase in the number of it's not students, but girls and boys. So that means we are really focusing on issues related to gender. So the question is, how far are we uh, in achieving our goal? Are we on the right path? I think just last year, we, we gathered some data from our teachers, and we wanted to analyze. If we're talking about students leaving secondary school to do science-oriented courses, then they have to jump the first hurdle. The first hurdle in our education system is when they leave lower secondary school, the students have to choose science combinations because our students have the opportunity to do science or not to do science at A level. So last year, this is very basic data analysis, but we have also done some very in-depth data analysis waiting for corroboration with actual data from institutions like NESA. Last year, we collected data from our teachers and we wanted to track um, the expression of interest in science combination. So before students do their national or level exams, they're normally given an opportunity to express interest and to say which, uh, which courses do they want to pursue at A level. So through our teachers, working with the directors of studies, some of whom are well represented here, uh, we collected data from the schools for 2018, 2019, and 2020. Um, 21. So if we go back to the other slide, and we saw that indeed there's an upward trend in terms of the number of students who express interest. Now, there are two factors that will play to ensure that the students do science at A level. One is expressing interest or having an interest, and number two is performance. So we can only make deep conclusions after we put alongside this, um, the performance. But just looking at that basic uh, trend uh, graph, there's a sense that it's on an upward trend in terms of the number of students picking science combinations. And even more important, there is every evidence that the trend, the more girls, the trend is more positive amongst the girls. So more girls, there's a greater percentage on the number of girls who are actually now expressing interest in doing science combinations. And so we later did an analysis to find out whether they, this, this, these differences are significant. And one of the things that we found out, um, the next graph, is that indeed, the, looking at the data of the girls that expressed interest in sciences in 2018 and the girls that expressed interest in sciences by the end of 2021, the difference is significant. So something, I mean, we know that we are not the only ones working on the ground we are working, there are so many other institutions working alongside us and we are always collaborating. So we will not say that this is just because of what we are doing, but ultimately as people working in the field, 
the main thing is we have the same goal. So we celebrate this and we commit ourselves to continue working with the other partners, the other institutions on the ground, the key stakeholders, to ensure that this actually becomes a reality. So how, what are some of the things we've been doing to promote um, maths and sciences to our girls? I just want to read a few comments that came from our directors of studies in 20, um, if we go to the next slide, in 20, I think it was 2021, we had a meeting with our directors of studies and we, it was a, um, what we call the TTP assembly. And they all reported that they had seen some change in their schools towards teaching and learning of maths and sciences. And some of the comments, they were able to make comments about why they are seeing that change. And it's important that I say this, and please note that even though we are here, 200 of us, uh, over another 200 or more are actually joining us. They are streaming in. So our teachers from the 14 districts, who the sum total is around, the sum is around 3,000, a number of them are currently streaming in into this session. So one of the things that the deans of studies talked about, or some of the factors, they talked about the fact that they see teachers making greater effort to encourage students more to engage with maths and sciences. They also talked about um, seeing our teachers stepping out. And this is something that really normally humbles us every end of the term. From a number of our schools, we see our science teachers, both male and female, coming together to buy some awards to actually give to the students who have performed well in maths and science. Now, this is their own money. It is not school budget. And this is something that is picking up quite a bit across a number of our schools, and we want to just appreciate our teachers for that. And this helps to motivate the students because they can see that their efforts are being recognized. And then the other thing they talked about, I believe, is the issues of ICT, that now teachers are able to use ICT in the class and allow students to see some of the simulations of some of the concepts or the science practical concepts that they are teaching. And then finally, something that I want to zero on, they actually stated that they can see that many girls, their belief system towards maths and science is changing for the positive. That most students, both girls and boys, are beginning to believe that they are able to do well in maths and science. And that is very important because we always say, as a man thinketh, so is he. So even if I teach so well, but my student is sitting at her corner thinking, I was not born for maths, then it might be very difficult for that student to do well. So the belief system of our students, so just to quote they say, they said also believes about science, and the, the, the belief that maths and science are difficult for girls has changed. So more girls and boys believe that they have equal chances um, on maths and science. So, on, so all this was feedback from deans of studies. Please note, most deans of studies are not maths and science teachers, but they are charged with the responsibility of providing academic oversight of what's going on in the schools. So this was, this was some very critical feedback that we got from the deans of studies. And some of these actually can be found um, on our site where this conversation uh, took place. Now, I just want to very quickly then highlight what are some of the things we've been doing as a program, especially to help change the beliefs of the students, because this connects to why we are talking about female science teachers. Why should we be celebrating female science teachers? Why should there be an effort about looking at whether female science teachers are visible to the students as leaders in their schools? And some of the things we've been doing, so I'm not so sure the photos are very um, clear, but some of the things we've been doing, basically, I'm going to talk about two main events. Apart from improving the quality of teaching, training our teachers on gender responsive pedagogy, our teachers themselves stepping out to actually champion the cause for maths and science. And when I say that, I mean both our male and female teachers and i really really want to send a special shout out to all our teachers those in the room and those of course who are listening to us online and of course they cannot do this with the very good support of the head teachers with the deans of studies but i think uh, i'll go to the next slide one of the things that we 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 have been doing two things uh one is every year we've been celebrating the international day for women and girls in science and when we do that we help the students to reflect on the place for women and girls in science through different activities. Now this year, for example, we had over four, 300 schools across the districts, across the country, celebrate International Day for Women and Girls in Science. And what did we do? 
each school came up with their own celebration event. Some had sports, some had science activities, some had so many different things. But what we did as AIMS TTP, which connects to our conversation today, is that we were able, through partnerships with some very uh, close um, entities like Rawis, um, there's Powerha and other institutions, we were able to mobilize women scientists, Rwandan women scientists, ladies who are already mathematicians, engineers, and of course other areas of STEM, and we were able to send these ladies to each school so that they were part of the celebration, they were able to engage with the teacher, the students, so that the students can touch and feel, especially the girls, they can touch and hear from a fellow female who has gone through the same education system and is currently thriving as a scientist. Now, for this particular program that ran for two weeks, we were able to reach over 200,000 students. And when we say we sent female scientists to schools, we are not talking about schools, you know, in Kigali. We are talking about schools deep in Rusizi, deep in Gororero, down in Nyabihu, Rubavu, all the 14 districts, and right where our students are, both schools of excellence, Y12, Y9. And these are some of the things that are really important in helping change the belief system of our girls, that maths and science is something that they can do. The other thing that we've done is also the issues of industry visit. And um, okay. um, the other thing that we've also done is also industry visits. Just three weeks ago, we had industry visits where over 2,000 students from across, again, our 800 schools selected based on their engagement on a special program we call Science Hour were actually sponsored to go and visit um, industries. And I think we have a picture to that and later maybe we'll see a news item from one of our TV, teacher TV stations on YouTube talking about the industry visits. So these are some of the very unique initiatives. Why? One, for the industry visits, research shows that the girl child is always connected to a discipline that they can see being used to solve societal um, challenges. So when they can see the science concepts actually being used to produce something that they use every day, they went to the water treatment plant, they went to the tea factory, they went to the cassava production uh, factories, they went to the flower plant, and they can see the different science and math concepts actually in action. They can touch it, they can see it, they can feel it. This actually brings the science much closer and injects greater inspiration on all the students, but especially for the girls. So, um, so those are some of the things that we are doing. And before I continue with the final part of my presentation, and before then I invite our panelists uh, on board, I just want to mention that, um, as Professor Sam had mentioned earlier in his statement, uh, we are privileged to have the Minister of State for Primary and Secondary Education in our midst. So thank you very much, uh, Minister, for joining us. Um, maybe some teachers have never seen you and been with you in the house. So he will be talking to us later in the day. So please just sit tight. He will be talking to us later in the day and making his comments. But thank you very much for joining us. So I just want to walk then very quickly to, so um, what about leadership? Why are we talking about leadership? Going back to the statement about sending female scientists to schools, we are aware that the first female role models that our girls and our boys come across are our teachers, our female teachers. And so we've been asking ourselves the question, if we are talking about breaking the bias, we need to interrogate and find out what is the current state of female the, what is the current state or issues related to gender in terms of leadership? When you talk about heads of department, when you talk about deans of studies, when you talk about head teachers. So we collected uh, some data from our teachers. Around 2,000 teachers responded to this. So around 800 schools are represented in this. And one of the things we saw, so very quickly, I'm just going to... Um, I'm just going to... Um, show us some graphs, and then we'll have a panel conversation, but we'll have a break in between. So let's, let's bring out the graphs, a little bit of mathematical sciences. So the percentage of schools with female leaders, um, looks like it is loading before 
the graphs. We have the graphs. Okay, I'm going to read it out from here. Um, just give me a second. Looks like there's a hitch there. Um, Freddie, can I have that put up? So anyway, I, I would, I, I'm going to pull it out from my phone if our technology allows. And if it doesn't, at least I have a few of that in my head. So I'll just mention. So one of the things we observed, and I'll just read because um, unfortunately we don't have the graphs up, but when we ask our teachers, uh, so there they are, gender of leaders, okay. Um, our teachers, female, was about 22, head, 22% head teachers are female, uh, head, heads of departments for sciences, that is biology, physics, and chemistry combined, are at 20%. Um, mathematics, those who are female, are at 20, 23%. And for deans of studies, those who are female across our 800 school are also around 29%. So that's general leadership. So I want us to start thinking about that. So um, then we ask the teachers, is it, we wanted to find out, is this the case because our our female teachers are not interested in leadership. Could that be the contributing factor? So we ask our female teachers whether they have aspiration to be heads of departments, deans of studies, or head teachers. And we had over 80% um, say that indeed they would like to be heads of departments at some point. Uh, so it's almost like the opposite. Also, another almost 80% said they would like to be heads of the uh, head teachers. Um, and then um, around 76% they said they would like to be deans of studies. And so you can see that while on one end we have hardly 30% of our heads of departments, deans of studies, head teachers as females. On the other side, when you talk to the female teachers and ask them about uh, their aspirations, over 80% of them, on average, would like to hold those positions. And today we'll be listening to some of them to ask them, why are we not having their teachers in those positions? Now we asked the teachers, do they think it would make a difference in terms of teaching and learning of mathematics and sciences if we had female head teachers um, female heads of departments, or if they had a female dose, or if they had um, um, a female uh, head of department in terms of science. And again, there was a mixed sense of feedback. I would like to say that uh, the maybes were quite significant. Uh, the maybes uh, was about 40% for the, for, for the, for the males re respondents. And the maybe was still also at around 40% for the female respondents, but what we saw in that data is that the female seemed to suggest more per a greater percentage of, uh, of female teachers seemed to think that it would make a difference. Okay, now I will just finish with uh, some observation we made when we were doing our selection for um, scholarships. So we'll be talking about this in the second session. But we invited teachers to submit applications for scholarships, either those who are diploma to degree and those who are degree to masters. Around 345 teachers submitted applications for uh, diploma to degree. Now, this, then we wanted to find out, one of the things that struck us, this is not something we were looking for, but we came across it when we were doing selection. We observed that 
a number of the teachers who do not have degrees yet, when we compared the male and the female, more male who do not have degree yet actually hold leadership positions as heads of department. In the same way, we also looked at, we also came across data, which we were not looking at for, but we came across it, that a number of our teachers who do not have degree have the privilege to teach at A level. But what we found out is that while around 30% of the male teachers who do not have degree have the privilege of teaching at A level, less than 10% of the female teachers have the same privilege. So technically, we, we see here that there is, there, is, there, is, there is something for us to interrogate. Why do we have less female teacher leaders at heads of departments, deans of studies, and head teachers when many females actually have the aspiration to hold those positions? Another question that is worth answering is why do we have teachers even those who have degrees, we still had more males teaching at A level compared to more females. So these are some of the things we'll be discussing during our panel conversation. So I've just given you some food of thought, but we'll be having the teachers themselves and some of those who have gone ahead of them come forward and we'll be looking into this a little bit so that we can get the answers not from us, but from the teachers themselves. But before we do that, because we've been sitting and because today is a day for celebration, uh, we want to have a small celebration break. Uh, we have a team that is here to help us celebrate the ladies. And um, so I'm going to invite Stella and her team. They are going to have a small celebration piece for all of us. Please remember the data should not stress you. Sometimes data put, makes us look very serious because things are not looking very good. But on the other hand, remember the good news. We are actually making progress in terms of our girls particip participating in maths and science. So we want to have a very balanced day of celebrating, but also for asking ourselves tough questions so that we can get the solutions and even move with a greater momentum. So on that note, I want to invite Stella and her team. Uh, they're going to come forward and they're going to uh, have one celebration piece for us before we get into the panel to get the answers from the teachers themselves. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Irene, uh, for showing us this data score, highlight where we want to go, and the tools to take us there. Ndiba zako pamwe muri twe tubona ko ari inyondo, ari umwe mu turi mwe ku celebrating uyu munsi. Aba bimfasha abumva ko ariyo babimfasha. Nyundo we you comes up. I want to thank my fellow men. I'm a Mangis who came to celebrate our sisters, our mothers, and who came to celebrate women in general. There is only one way to know the men in the house, and I think the conversation on the table, so the instructions will not be my bother. I would say, I will make you fishers of men. To Jacob Jenda. Rimwe Kavirigatatu. I will make you fishers. Okay, I didn't see men uh, coming up. I think uh, we can all uh, see the number and the ratios. Thank you very much. Stella, the floor is yours.
Vous savez tout le monde a dit que c'était un peu comme ça. I'm going to perform in English, French, and Kinyarwanda, uh, along with my friends Stella Touche and Gideon. We are honored to recite a poem that was written by Her Excellency, the First Lady of Rwanda, Madame Jeannette Kagame. It is called the world I dream of on Women's Day. <laughs> in hope, perspective in wonder, for the present is present. We are both knowing that women are resilient to a fault, to not the mountain even hungry they will feed the world so when I see the strength of a woman whose spine is whose back is sturdy at fabrics hidden beneath grace and beauty. I also see the ravage in as her queen of glory. Why should that woman navigate between and victimization? Why must we submit a yearly date to condemn female degradation? Why? I imagine a world different from this present one. It is a how often we imagination. Yet imagination is the lyric of an irrepressible spirit. Irrepressible spirit. Where creativity and art once collided, our were once sonated. Ukura nyubgisa, ukawa ninge nzikoko. Ukura nyituze, ukura nyubgisa, ukawa ninge nzikoko. What if we, like dreamers, allowed our minds to form the past, just hearts wide open, to
with my eyes closed, bright as day, a just a flower, an and a very kind world in which prejudice has passed was driven far away and in this world of even I see a woman and a girl claim their fair share of of and of and I find and hope in wonder. Perhaps you'd care to join me. Le monde que j'imagine a appris de nos erreurs. Il soigne les blessures causées par nos échecs. Il ne connaît le dur désir de dominance qui aime pour victime, femme et enfant. Celui qui semble toujours vivre aujourd'hui dans un coin de nos cœurs. Et si ce le monde pour lequel nous dépendait de nos précédentes actions. Et si nous refusions enfin de tolérer qu'une femme de plus soit abandonnée au point qui aujourd'hui balaye et un jour construit en offrant et pleinement sueur, amour et vie. Pari wate garugori, muri beni muhe, muri ndanga mirkwa. Pari wate garugori, muri beni muhe, quand je me laisse un peu rêver, les femmes que nous célébrons ce mois-ci, en leurs efforts et vertus, et reconnues tout au long de l'année. The world I dream of on Women's Day is one of empowerment and vocal allies. United in mission by humanity's teams. That I've given their daughters pay this support to the sisters as a some frightening, negligent world. You give to your mothers and with May your conviction never falter. May you never observe In the world, I dream of compassion and support are not. Indeed, I let my mind wander and, and hope so the 
along which our children run are evenly endowed by rain and sun. Jeux rêver d'un futur lumineux pour les femmes. Je rêve d'un monde où égal est chaque âme. Voilà, cause Tiane. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Ayona uh, Amashi Masavano. Avise la Mri Bibliat Ravuga. Tinajiti Chibi Cherim Butonziza and Hani Butonziza Zeraku Jiti Chibi. Wono Muvugo Koko of Itawa Truts. Ambassava Ko Kawonji Ramashi. Uh, because it's a Nestella, Nichipe Kudusruta, we thank you very much for that wonderful poem and the entire performance. Uh, because of time, we're going to follow with the next session, uh, which is going to be led by Dr. Herino Otiano, Director MSTTP. Dr. De Flosius. I would like to call the following people to join Dr. Hirin uh, at the panel. Honorable Fraha Emma, please uh, join the panel. Nsaba Koto Mukomira Mashi Atambok. Director of Studies, Jessica Rengira Mucho. Esther, please join the panel. Head of Department, Science Department, Jess HP, uh, HVP Gatagara, please join the panel. And uh, last but not least, Dr. Kristen. Sabetu Akumiri Mashi. Kuwanga Gibju Mamadu Fashes Mikorozi. Good. Hello. Thank you very much. Um, so as I'd said earlier on, we paused our conversation and the, we want to try and get answers to the data that we saw in the first presentation. Uh, but be, we, before we go into the session, I would like to give an opportunity for each of the panelists to introduce themselves and tell us very briefly in two sentences what their current leadership position is. And I think I've been advised that um, because we are tested and because we are well social distanced, the panelists are allowed to remove um, their masks. So feel free to remove your masks if you're okay with that. 
So I'm going to start with um, Dr. Christine, so that we just come back towards me. So Dr. Christine, kindly introduce yourself. Uh, I think it's on. You just need to. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. OK, thank you very much, and good morning. Well, there's not much I, I need to say that, uh, other than saying that I'm uh, a teacher by profession and a devout supporter of women and girl and youth empowerment. And uh, the only agent of a change, sustainable change, know this for any nation is the teacher. The teacher is the foundation of all good things, if properly utilized. So a well-trained and motivated teacher with the best foundation layer, you are the torch bearer. Of course, if misused, catastrophe would result. So I support teachers, because I'm one of them, and I believe the future of a nation depends on a good foundation. Just like we have got these tall buildings, depend on firm foundation. Thank you. Thank you, and Dr. Christine, just uh, for the sake of in the context of leadership, uh, perhaps you want to just mention briefly um, your outgoing post. Uh, as you always say, you are retired, but not tired. Sure, sure. Well, starting my immediate um, post, I was um, um, uh, applied sciences analyst in the Higher Education Council. Before that, I was Director General for Science, Technology, and Research in the Ministry of Education. Before that, I was a lecturer at the University of, um, of Rwanda. But I've had many other responsible positions, but all in these, I believe, in the teachers. The proper training has given me the direction and you fellow teachers and especially lady teachers because whether you like it or not there is that mother instinct to impart the best because you are conscious of the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the ladies in the house, the female teachers, you can hear the very stellar um, career path for Dr. Christine and um, we want to move on to uh, our next panelist, I believe our um, head of department. Please introduce yourself. <coughs> move it closer. Yeah, thank you very much. I am a deep head teacher in charge of studies. I am Munyara Mucho Esther from Nyamasheke district. Yeah, thank you. So Esther is currently a dean of studies uh, from Nyamasheke district, thank you. And then we have with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Marie Rose Mshimimana, uh, head of department from HVP Gatagaranyanta, a school, inclusive school. We have uh, the learner with hearing impairment and physical disability. But now, now, Disability is no uh, disability is not uh, disability is not inability. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Um, and then we have our honourable member of parliament, please. Thank you so much. My name is uh, Rubagumya Fraha Emma. I'm a member of parliament, as they said. Uh, at parliament. Uh, I chair the Standing Committee of uh, Political Affairs and Gender, uh, which is one of uh, the nine standing committees in the parliament, the Chamber of Deputies. Uh, prior to um, being a member of parliament, I worked in education sector for quite some time, for over 18 years. So um, I'm a teacher by professional, and um, I had an opportunity to serve in that sector for many years, and I'm very passionate about education. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So we have um, a great cross-section of uh, today who are going to try and help us um, make better sense of the data that we talked about. We basically are here to talk about the current gender difference in um, school leadership. As we saw from the data that was collected from the AIMS teacher training program, teachers, around 2,000 respondents, uh, coming from around 800 schools, we were able to see that less than, I mean, for, for the three positions at school level, deans of studies, head of department, head teachers, the 800 school 
less than 30% of our schools have female teachers in that position. On the other hand, when we looked at the data, we saw that over 80% of our female teachers actually have expressed interest in being leaders. So the question that we need to try to answer somewhat today is why is there a gap between the aspiration, the desire of our female teachers and the actual reality on the ground? So um, we have our panelists who are going to help us uh, answer that. And so I'm going to ask the first question. First of all, already the panelists are here to demonstrate that it's possible. We have a female head of department in a special school. Uh, we have a female dean of studies. And of course, we have our two uh, senior female uh, uh, who actually have a great background in teaching and, and have actually also risen to leadership outside school. So I want us to just think and hear from us, why do we have less women? as leaders in our schools. And I want to start with the ladies who are currently leaders in schools because they're seeing what's going on today. And then I'm going to um, get back to hear deeper reflections from Dr. Christine and from our honorable member of parliament. So I want to start with our dean of studies. You are a leader, you are a dean of studies, but only 20% of the, of the deans of studies in our schools are female. What why is that the case? What's the problem? I think the problem is miss or lack of self-confidence and our culture in society. Some of them consider leader as unable to take leadership and there is a barrier of our level of studies or level of um, qualification, our qualification, mm -hmm. because being a leader, it require being qualified or high level of education. Thank you. Thank you. So you, uh, you already pointed out some very pertinent issues, but you started with confidence. Yesterday on a WhatsApp yes. platform, I asked, a group of teachers, male and female, why don't we have female teachers as leaders? And the first person to respond was a male, and he said, they are afraid. So our head of department, do you believe that our teachers, our female teachers are afraid? Is that part, is that the reason why we do not have enough heads of departments like you as female teachers? Before I come back to the other points. I think that some of them, mm -hmm. they are fear to be a leader mm -hmm. of any position. Mm -hmm. But now, I think many, uh, many ladies, they are able to be a leader to any position. Mm -hmm. uh, what I can, is, I can say, already try to be confident mm -hmm. to any position and Try to be no. Uh, try to be not fear. Mm -hmm. Be confident because uh, we are able to do anything. Thank you very much. Thank you. So you are convinced that yes, some of us might have been fearful, but now you believe we are able. Dr. Christine, you are hearing the issue of confidence, the issues of fear coming up. Having been a teacher and grown in your different leadership position, is this something that we need to be paying attention to? The fact that perhaps there are aspects of confidence, of self-esteem that we need to look into? Or do you think there are other underlying factors that are causing, um, that we should pay attention to, that's causing this fear? Thank you. I, I fully support these ideas that were raised by colleagues mm -hmm. because it is true. And the greatest underlying problem is cultural stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Because, well, having been all teachers and some of you still being teachers, you, have, you know this expression that when a child lives with appreciation, when a child lives with support, he develops confidence. But often, the stereotypes don't allow us. You are supposed to be this, not that. This, not that. But with encouragement, the kids come out. 
And from what we have seen, looking back some 10 years back, encouragement has led girls to perform very well because of good policies. So policies from decision makers are a very big positive tool that will break this barrier and bring about confidence. Because other times you'd see, what, sometimes you find yourself in a position and you act to save your soul because you feel it is a big challenge. But with times, you need to you, you learn to come and stand up because people start appreciating. So from this, you feel you don't want to let them down. What is happening in schools also? You have seen with good policies, if well implemented, and the feedback is a good indicator that things are working. Perhaps I could stop at this for the time being so that we give the others a chance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to jump over to Honorable Member of Parliament. She's talking about policies. So your day-to-day -day work is about thinking about policies, of course, at a, at a higher level. But I, I just want to bring this back to you. You are a former teacher. We are talking about issues of confidence. But then we are also saying that confidence can be mitigated if there's an enabling environment. If there are policies that can support and encourage our teachers um, to be leaders. Looking back to your experience as a leader and your growing into leadership, what are some of the policies that you think were in place that supported your growth as a leader that you perhaps could share with the leaders, uh, the school leaders that are listening today? Thank you so much for uh, this question. Um, actually, when I was looking at the presentation, uh, I looked at the numbers of uh, um, um, women leaders in different positions that you presented. I also looked at uh, um, their response. They mm. said they are willing. Yes. Uh, yet the numbers are low. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, they, then they should be telling us what is the missing mm -hmm. uh, uh, link. Mm -hmm. What is happening that, such that they are not um, able to, to, to hold those positions. Um, and then I thought about the policies. Then I said, our policies are so, so favorable in terms of uh, um, allowing uh, uh, gender equality in all aspects. I think most of the work to promote gender equality started with education, with the education sector to make sure that we have uh, um, both girls and, uh, and boys in schools. And then promoting uh, um, women to be in education system and which I think uh, we have a good number of them. I was sharing with the people I seated with on, on the table a lot of uh, um, work that was done in the education sector to make sure that we have uh, uh, girls uh, in schools and more especially in sciences and mathematics. So um, where we are now, actually I don't think there is anything that should be hindering uh, women from participating in these leadership positions because uh, the policy is very clear, and they have role models. If we could start by the higher positions, the, the decision-making position, I think it is very visible that the political will is there. Everything that is uh, needed to create the enabling environment for uh, women to participate in leadership positions is there. Um, so. Um, I think what is needed is uh, for, for, uh, for the women themselves to have confidence in themselves and maybe to have some uh, little support at, uh, at the ground level to make sure that they get what it takes to participate in this leadership position. Otherwise, when I scan, be it in terms of laws, be it in terms of policies, enabling environment is there. So what is remaining is for them to come forth and just say, uh, if there is anything that is needed, maybe in terms of mentorship, coaching, uh, information sharing, because as we know, these positions in the schools nowadays, they are competitive. People have to compete for these positions. So if they don't come forth and compete for these positions, then it will remain as it is right now. But having the role models in all different positions at decision-making uh, uh, levels, I think it is uh, it's, um, a motivating factor that could drive women to um, women in the schools to uh, come forth and participate in or maybe uh, compete for the leadership positions. Thank you. Thank you. So we have it out that we have great policies, we have great role models in different sectors, and now within our school system, we just need to ask ourselves 
how we can encourage the ladies to step out because they have said they are interested to actually position themselves for this leadership position. I want to go to our head of department. I have been made to understand that in many schools for you to be a head of department, you are selected by the leadership or through uh, the other colleagues. So the question is, some, what, what are some of the things? How did you become a head of department? Could you tell us a little bit of how you became a head of department? What you think helped you to rise to that position? Thank you. Uh, to be a head of department, first, I'm confident mm. to, to show uh, other peoples that the ladies or the women are able to do. Uh, I take this opportunity to encourage those uh, uh, girls learners to show that they are able and they can work, work hard to be uh, the future leaders for uh, the school or other position in the country. Thank you. So confidence, being able to show your capacity, especially in working with students, those are some of the things that helped you rise into your position as a head of department. What about our dose? What are some of the things that helped you rise into the position as a dean of studies when many ladies actually have not been able to take that position? Thank you very much. Only my position, I think there were many things to do for ready st students uh, first of all is it to encourage those uh, female students to choose or to guide them in their choosing of combination in the advanced level uh, i sensitize to them to choose science and the in their assessment after analyzing the result from assessment uh, we organize the ceremony to give award to those girls who succeed well in mathematics or other science. And so, as me, as a reader, I work as a role model in my school and other or local community. And after all those, we inform the parents of those girls to help them in daily study. Thank you very much. Okay, so it's coming out very clearly that one of the pathways to leadership in our schools is leadership in the school. So being able to step out in some of the activities that are happening within the school, to sensitize students, to engage with the parents. But Dr. Christine, I want to bring this back to you. When I gathered information from the teachers about this, um, some of the ladies actually said, no, I am not actually interested in being a leader. And um, part of what was said was, you know, we don't have enough time as, as female um, teachers that taking leadership position as a dean of study or as a head of department actually comes with a lot of work, which unfortunately ladies might not have because of their other responsibilities. What would be your advice about that balance? Because indeed, there are responsibilities that ladies have to take into account from your experience. Is this something that, is this a position that ladies should hold, that I have too much work to be a leader? What would be your advice based on your own experience? Well, I think in life, if you want to, to bring about a change, which I feel is everybody's aspiration, change for the best, of course. Have sacrifices. One of these is, uh, like in Kenya, one we've got a saying, we are saying, isn't it? In a leadership position, to be able to make it, you must be able to, to be realistic. What are normally the obstacles? Then you seek for solutions to this. And in the process, you bring about innovations. From what was negative, you put it in a way that is attractive, it is um, it, like marketing the values from that one. So when you are given a leadership position, you must show that, I mean, people are pointed, you were not mistaken. At any cost, you must do it. Because there are qualities they found in you that you are capable to do that. And to do that, then you need to lay priorities. 
Of course, things are not always nice, nice, nice. Again, I like the King Rwanda expressions are fantastic. Is that is not life because you are not going to be advancing. This uh, when I say when you use uh, our culture, you start from our values. Start from where you are, know your background, and then steer the way towards solving those problems. The backgrounds, background, because the problem of um, stereotypes, mindset, they will always be there unless you you break through, break the biases. And then the process, you involve both boys and girls early in life. Because in the process, you show the positive way that is appreciated by society. In the process, there is your responsibility now as a lady. There is the, our gender, you need to involve them also. And then the plan that is given to make it life livable. Use experience of everyday life. Set a target and help people to attain them. That is uh, a way to get everybody involved. Instead of being up there and doing dictatorship, hit on them, uh -uh. help them to go through realizing the achievement. Of course, as teachers, you know, positive reinforcement. Okay, in the process, you are growing. These people who are not confident in themselves, they are coming up, and then there is a, there are, uh, Targets to be achieved, you leave them to achieve them. In the process, you go evaluating, reinforcing them, encourage them. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll push that question back also to the Honorable Member of Parliament, reading through the comments of our teachers. This issue of time really came up. So there are people who said, you know, for the ladies to be leaders, maybe it should be the time when their children are all grown up. Then they can take some of this leadership position because it requires too much time. And so it looks like it's one of the greatest bottlenecks that our ladies have uh, in terms of thinking or stepping out, or showing that confidence that they want to be leaders. Looking back to your own experience as a teacher, but also in your current position, what word of advice would you give to our teachers? Because in this room, we brought about 30 teachers who actually have indicated that they are aspiring to be heads of departments, to be deans of studies, to be head teachers. But it seems like these are some of the things that sometimes stand in their way to step out or to want to hold those positions. And then I'm going to come back to the deans of study to really tell us what are some of the practical strategies used. But before I come to the dean of studies, uh, our honorable member of parliament. Thank you. Um, um, I don't know. Um, my own experience tells me that uh, it just has to do with uh, what you value most. Mm -hmm. uh, everything that we do takes time. Whether you are a teacher, you are a nurse, any profession, a leader, it will take time for sure. It, there is, so it depends on you. What do you want? Do you think that um, you better spend time being led or being, or leading? Because much as we may think that uh, being a leader takes more time, but everything that you do and you do it well, it will take time. I'm not sure being, for example, a head of department is much work than preparing uh, a certain lesson. If you really have to prepare a good lesson to teach, if you are preparing a physics um, class, starting from reading the books, preparing the lesson, preparing the, um, the what is this, the, um, not schemes of, yes, there are schemes of work, there are plans, there are everything, but also preparing for the laboratory work. There is much work to do. It is the same as being a, a, a head of department where you have to organize these other things to make sure that teachers are doing what they're supposed to be doing. So personally, actually what um, sort of motivated me was if we leave leadership for men as it was a stereotype as Dr. Christine is putting, then we'll have only one perspective. We we'll have main perspective in each and everything that we do. And they will be there to lead us and guide us the way they think things should be done. Then I was always motivated from my childhood that what men do, I can do. So actually, I think it is something, it was like a passion just from my, uh, my early childhood. I remember asking my father when I was in primary education. I was like, in this village, 
I, I'm talking about lack of role model then when, when we were growing up. You see the whole village, people are going to school. You see only men are going to school. Only boys are going to school. And I was like, is it I would ask my father, because my father was a, a teacher, is it for a girl to go for secondary school? Then he would say, yes, you can. What am I, what can I do so that I also go to secondary school? Is it possible for a girl child to study from primary to um, higher education nonstop? And then he would affirm, yes, it is possible. Go, do it. So maybe personally, my, my, my story is different. I was motivated from early childhood because I would see in my neighboring, only men are doing things. Only men are doing things. So I was like, if they are doing things, can't I do things as well? So when I graduated and I was able to maybe work, I was always like, is it possible for me to, do, to, to take leadership position? And when I tried, it worked out. It was just a matter of balancing these two, setting priorities, building this confidence. How do you build the confidence in an environment where uh, everyone else is a man? I remember when I started the, uh, the, the, the leadership positions in the Ministry of Education back then, we would have like management meeting of about 40 people and I was the only lady in that team. So I had to learn how to juggle between my uh, young family because then I was young, I had uh, young children, young marriage and young everything. Then you have to see how you set priorities, how you, um, plan to do things in advance so that you don't like uh, um, mix up in, in on the way. It's a lot of work, yes, but it needs determination. You need to be determined. You need to see the reason to why you have also to be in leadership position. Imagine it today, if the whole education sector here in Rwanda is going to be led by men, then there are so many things that are going to, to miss. So actually that determination, that need to make sure that uh, there is also a women perspective in each and everything that we do uh, personally pushed me to um, uh, get involved in, in, in leadership position from my early career. Hearing that indeed the responsibilities are there, but it takes a lot of planning, it takes a lot of prioritization, but it also takes a lot of determination. I think in, in, in TTP we normally say the Mawe Karambe spirit takes a lot of determination. You want it, you go for it, you pay the price for it, but it takes a lot of skillful planning and support. And I want to go to the doors. Um, as a dean of studies, how easy is it to lead your school now that you are a lady? Are there challenges you face as a dean of studies? And if there are, what are some of the challenges that you face? In my responsibility, I have uh, many challenges, but the first of all is to plan my activities and to respect my plan. I think it will be better to delegate sometime if it is necessary and to share responsibilities to others because I cannot do all things myself, but I delegate and I share responsibility to other members of my group. Other things is to take decision. Yeah, I am a decision maker. When it is possible, I ask advice to others and from experience from other readers, I can read and take a risk of my responsibility. Thank you very much. You. Very pertinent, yeah. very pertinent, very important. <coughs> being able to plan, being able to work with others, so you share responsibility. So when you, think of, when you think of being a dean of studies, do not imagine that everything in that office has to be done by you. If you learn how to share responsibilities with your team members, that helps you to share the load and actually manage. And the other thing I really also liked is the issue of asking questions. So it does not mean that for you to be a dean of studies or to be a leader, you must know it all. You must go into that position that there are things you will not be able to do. But if you reach out to your peers, to people, you can actually get help and resolve that. So I'm going to go to the last round of questions. And um, I'm going to come to um, our head of department. 
you are working in a very special school, um, a school that has also special needs students. Do you think it is important for the students that they see a female teacher as a leader? What, what difference does it bring? Do you think it is important from your own experience using some examples from your school? Thank you very much. As my school is a special school, we full learn now with full hearing impairment and the physical disability. Uh, as a female head of department, I help my school to show those uh, those those learners with disability that they are able to do any activity. Mm -hmm. You encourage them to work mm -hmm. with others to show their ability and to encourage them to be a future leaders for working in the special position of uh, disabilities. Thank you. Okay, so you are a role model to other people who may not have felt um, encouraged to step out and to bring out their potential, but because you as a lady is a leader, you are able, they are able to see you as an example and you are able to encourage them to come out and actually also bring their ability. Now I'm going to ask two tough questions to Dr. Christine. You have been the min in the Ministry of Education and um, to our Honorable Parliament. I think one of the things that the, the, the teachers said was, you know, deans of studies, head teachers, head of department, actually the head of department still teaches, okay? So they still teach. Um, the deans of studies, of course, teach a few, uh, fewer lessons. And of course, the head, uh, head teacher also have um, additional responsibility. But then they said, look, all this work without recognition. So they were saying, you know, um, some of them said, actually, it is better to remain a teacher because as a teacher, if you are a senior teacher, your salary, uh, there's, there's a policy to increase salary every year. So at some point, a senior teacher might actually be earning more than a dean of studies or maybe in some cases head teacher. So sometimes there is that sense that, well, this is additional work without um, remuneration. What would be your response to such a concern? It's me? Yes, Dr. Christine. Okay, thank you very much. I think the first and foremost um, approach to this is to have ambitions. Don't just sit down, the things will come and pass. Because through ambitions, you want to improve yourself. That is what we call CPD, continuous professional development. And then competing with yourself. If you achieve this this year, the next year should be higher than that. Because another thing that you should remember, you're in an environment that's changing. Because if this applied yesterday, it will not work tomorrow. So to be able to know what is happening, even not only in, in, in an institution, even in the school itself, the community in one school is different from another one. So you need to be part and parcel of this one. As if we have got uh, feelers within the community and know what do they want? How would I solve the problems they are? You know, we've got this famous expression in Rwanda of homegrown solution, okay? In the process then, you keep yourself abreast with what is happening. You want to make yourself the best to be marketable. Huh? To be, another thing that is uh, through ambition is job satisfaction, profession satisfaction. Well, if people may not appreciate it, but if you feel you're contributing your best, not only feeling, but do you even show that? Because the, the tenets of complacence can be destructive. Work hard, be determined, lay priorities, and then in the process, of course, keep improving yourself, to keep us, especially in the teaching profession. I like, uh, I always make uh, this um, saying, these days people say innovation, innovations that are too advanced, too far out in the special sector, innovations are part and parcel of everyday life, all sectors. Even in Kenya Rwanda, there is a saying, isn't it? In your life, don't be complacent with what you are. 
keep yourself, improving yourself, improve for institution if you're heading an institution. Now, as, um, as a, on, on, uh, say a dean of a student or even um, head of a department, there is no way you can know what is going on in your department unless you are part and part of it. It keeps you the contact with them. What do they need? What are obstacles they are in? What innovation you can bring about? In the process, you want them to be updated, well versed with what is going on, so that they deliver the quality you are interested in. Thank you. Uh, uh, the final comment from a honorable member of parliament and as you answer that just to also mention one of the things that the ladies talked about especially for head teachers they said you know if you apply to be a head teacher part of the challenge is that you are not sure where you're going to be posted and so if for example you are in Gishumbi and you are posted in Rubavu as a, as a woman it might not be very easy for you to tell your family we are packing up we are going to Rubavu so these are things that perhaps touch around policy. What's your reflection about these two aspects? Thank you. Um, one comment that I want to make about uh, 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 leadership and um, the recognition and the remuneration is that um, I don't want to go um, into uh, leadership and the types of leadership and what have you because I, I know you know that. Uh, but um, what, motivates, uh, what motivates people to be leaders is not necessarily uh, a remuneration or salaries. Actually, someone who is a leader, uh, if I could mention one type of leadership, someone who is like born <laughs> as a leader, they are motivated by changes, to see things changing to see things happening in different ways. Actually, this is uh, one of the push that would push anyone who is like a leader by nature to do things, to, to, to come forth and, and become a leader despite uh, whatever they are earning, actually. Because you want to see things changing in your school. Maybe you have been a teacher, you have been teaching A, B, C, D, but you think there is something that you need to contribute to. And then that would drive you uh, to aspire to have a position that will allow you to influence that much as in each and everything that we do we can easily influence uh, starting from our spheres of influence but uh, the more you um, get leadership position the more you are able to influence in each and uh, in whatever you want to influence in this context uh, uh, whatever is happening in schools so actually uh, uh, what I wanted to, to say is that um, we should be motivated by seeing things happening in a better ways than waiting for a narration and what have you. Much as I know that it is the policy of the Minister of Education, uh, maybe the minister is around, is going to talk about it uh, himself if need be. But uh, you also know these policies, uh, how they are trying to uh, make sure that the conditions are improving. Uh, uh, the issue of... Um, Posting, if you decide to be a head teacher or what, you can be posted far from where your family is staying. Yes, there is a, a probability. I don't know what probability, but even then, even then, if your drive is to save your country, you can save your country wherever you are posted. Because this country, you can go anywhere and save. And that, then it is... Um, upon you and your spouse and maybe if you have one or your family to discuss and see in this country it is very easy if you are you have been living in Gichumbi and now you are posted to go to Rubavu moving with your family could be easy and even probably leaving one of you working there but it's upon you as a family to sit down discuss agree on ways you can manage your affairs but this has happened we all have gone through that we all have gone through that. I remember uh, in 2000, and, uh, was it 2015? Yes, no, before that, 2011, I was working with the Minister of Education. My children were going to secondary school, teenagers, yes. Then I got transferred from Kigali to um, Kayonza. I went there, I worked for four years and came back. 
and there was nothing bad happened to my family because we had to sit down, discuss, agree. And that did not stop me from contributing uh, in leadership position as I was. I, I think I made my, my contribution where I was asked to go and contribute. And I came back later on in Kigali and uh, there was, yes, there are ups and downs, but you would manage them. So that should not be a hindrance actually for taking leadership position even when you are a woman because it has happened to more and they have made it and they have made their contribution. I think the, 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 what pushes you to be a leader should suffice more than uh, the obstacles. Obstacles are there. Even when you are in Kigali or wherever you are with your family, you will definitely face obstacles. But I think what is most important is to see your contribution towards the betterment of the education system. Yeah, thank you. A great place to stop. That part what should drive us is <clears throat> the inspiration that we can contribute to the betterment of education in the country. So with that, we want to take just one or two questions from the audience, and then we will move to the next um, session, a uh, very important session of today's ceremony. So is there a question, is there a comment? In our, in, in our midst, we have teachers who have said they are interested in being a head teacher, being a dean of studies, or being a head of department, but we also brought teachers in our midst who are already deans of studies, who are heads of department, who are also head teachers, both male and female, because as female teachers, you must be able to work in both environments. You must be able to lead with fellow females, but also work alongside the male. So I believe we've gathered and we've been inspired that, yes, there will be obstacles, but we are well able, as is demonstrated by our dossier and our head of department, and the two ladies who have gone through leadership within school and beyond. So any question, any comment? Thank you. I'm Aloiz Mugawindekwe from Nyamasheke District. I have uh, a question. I want to ask my question to the all high table. What do you think about the career barrier, the um, culture barrier? For example, we have some proverbs in Kinyarwanda saying, Hangoko Kazibikaho is Ruvuzu Mugore, Ruvugu Muhoro, Mugore, Ninghene, Vazirikama Tovari, and the other proverbs like that. They have said that uh, female, they are um, fear of being challenged by um, so called experienced co workers. And now I would like to ask you to compare. We have the books where the proverbs they are written. And those books, they are still uh, being there. And they give us uh, the proverbs which uh, show, show us that uh, female, they can't, they, they can nothing. What advice do you give them? Thank you. I have another question. Um, we'll just have one round of questions and then responses and then we close. Any other question, comment? Reflection. Hello, can yes. you hear me? Yeah, good morning. Uh, I would start um, uh, by really thanking the panelists. Thank you very much for your insights. Wonderful discussion. Really, this, I think this is a very pertinent discussion. Yeah, I'm Ruth Mukachmeni, uh, representing MasterCard Foundation. I'm privileged to be in this discussion. And uh, I have, I would say this is a, a comment, not a question for sure. Um, I think... Uh, Having an experience in the education sector, um, having worked with teachers closely as an inspector, as a chair trainer. So I've seen that again, even today, the, the issue of um, a few school leaders in terms of female is still, is something, is still there. As something has been, uh, I was seeing been before like five years ago, six years ago. So the problem, uh, I think, some of them have been mentioned, but we think um, there's a, a, something that we need to, to do. Um, I'm thinking we need affirmative action, really to um, see the female leaders or the female teachers being elevated to higher position in uh, school leadership. Um, I, I like the data that Heroin has uh, uh, um, showed us 
there's, there's a will for female teachers. They are, they, are they are really aspiration. They want to be in those positions. But what is holding them back? Why are not in those positions? I know there are lots of, uh, again, I believe uh, we still, the, the cultural uh, values or uh, stereotypes are still following us. We are not running away from that um, uh, so fast. But um, yeah, I think there are some things that have, should be done at the grassroots level, the support we need, right from the school level. Uh, the female le leaders, as much as the female teachers, as much as you want really to be school leaders, it seems there's something that should be done to be supported. That I would think if we really want to see female leaders in two schools or leaders, we need to apply the affirmative action. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Excuse um, me, Doctor, can we have a third question? Just yes, a final one. Me. Yes, please. It's great that the men have quite some good questions. Thank you very much. My name is Uitonze Anunciata. I am a sector education inspector, Musanze, district Muhoza sector. Uh, I thank you for your discussion. But I want to emphasize something which has been said by honorable member of parliament and my fellow teachers. Uh, First of all, to be a leader as a woman, as they have said, you have to plan. After planning and being organized, you have to, to be self-confident. Then you work as a team, work with others. After you sit and be share with your family member what you have been organized. And so you can succeed, you can perform well, you can be better, what you have planned, what you have, you, you, what you have to do can be, can be done, can be got done well and success. It is that I, I would like to add to the the discussion given by the Honorable Member of Parliament. He said that, first issue, I call upon my fellow women teachers. First of all, you have to sit together with your family, plan with them, and be organized in your work, so that as a woman, you will be a very good leader. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think we have had comments and we've also had questions. And um, I think I just want, um, I think some were directed, uh, directed to the Honorable Member of Parliament, who, uh, and maybe Dr. Christine, we can reflect on this the issue of us, uh, the uh, knowledge or literature there that needs to be challenged and removed from uh, people, uh, I mean, removed from um, the people interacting with it so that it does not go against some of these things, the aspirations and what we're trying to role model for our, for our teachers and our, our sisters in the wider society. Dr. Christine, do you want to start and then we come to? We'll start by referring to the question raised by the gentleman there. It's true. Culture is part of ourself, our life. And the problem that are related to culture, I mean, they take, they take time to change but a change is necessary. For example, like the saying uh, one of the people here mentioned that uh, in Okazini you become a surgery. Okay, there is another equivalent also in other societies, the equivalent in other societies. For example, where they can say, um, in Maasai culture in, Uga in, in Kenya, they are the women who construct the houses. You'll find women among themselves say, eh, how can a woman sleep in a house that was constructed by a man to a Rwandan society? Isn't that the opposite? To an extent then that, in this case, what has been set up from the years back, because the environment was different from what we have today. For example, when you, th when you think of career guidance and counseling, well, are you going to put girls aside so, and give them a different curriculum? To face today's problems, you must be realistic. For example, won't you have ladies aspiring to be architects? 
Don't you have ladies who are aspiring to be engineers? How would you construct a house unless you have planned to go to different levels, to climb, to, to be pilots? All these, what was, uh, when I, that's the thing I was talking about, the necessities of yesterday's are not the same as today, and they'll be different from tomorrow's. So you cannot apply the formula of yesterday to tomorrow because things have changed. And then another thing, if you are going to bring about equity, you are teaching both boys and girls to be competitive in the future. I mean, in other words, when you provide the right background, the right education, you're enabling them to be competitive in the world market. I always tell the students, you are not being trained for Rwandan market alone. No, you are a citizen of the world. So you are provided, equipped with the necessary tools to make you productive here at home, beyond the borders, in the whole world, because it is competition that matters. If I can go to the old saying these days, in biology when they used to say, the survival of the fittest, it seems to be more realistic now than ever before. Because even, another thing that is for sure, when you think of the hunger in Zara, is there a special massful hunger for girls and the most strict, stringent for boys? No. The environment we live in is the same. Equip them to explore, to design solutions to problems as they are, instead of borrowing from here and there and there. Uh, in Hong Kong, I'm not sure if you can. 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 I'm not on this very, very place, and then design a solution. The homegrown solution was mentioning. And again, equip them equally, and then, like the competence based curriculum, it was to prepare them for the future, to be able to identify problems, design a solution, be creative, and problem solver. So if you are going to equip them, you are not even follow to the, no, that's not um, supposed to be the way, no. So now, as a teacher, it is good, as I said, uh, we, when you start from our culture very, very familiar with, to provide the right solution, because even these policies, which are, we know they are working and they are very good, they are based on evidence-based results. It has been observed when this and this and this, and then this is a solution. So it is good from this background, when you know what were obstacles, to, that, to design appropriate solution so that you'd be convincing them that things are not always like this. Uh, for example, uh, that you can provide, I'm not to detect a solution. You can assess yourself and get the right answer. Especially, especially, especially what we still have a problem with in our education system, career guidance. We have it very late. If it starts early, slowly, where the kid is brought up with those do's and don'ts, and then we design them, I mean, you slowly build them to be appreciative, to be positive, okay? In other words, the values are instilled much earlier, and then you help the kids to observe, to be open, because you are widening the horizon to be able to judge the situation where they are, they find themselves. So in, in the brief, that's what I would say. It's good if we know what were the drawbacks, we can design an appropriate solution to fit them, not only here, but to equip them even to fly beyond our borders, to be productive and be positive in their, construct in their contribution. Thank you. Very quickly come to Honorable Member, your reflections about the comments, uh, some of the questions, if there's anything you want to add so that we can conclude this session and go to the next session. Thank you. So, um, Yeah, uh, maybe I, I would want to um, underscore the issue of uh, cultural barriers in, in, our, in our society. Maybe what, what I want to say about this is that uh, uh, cultures also evolve. They do evolve with time. They do change. 
they are being some are surpassed by time. So if there is anything or any stereotype or any cultural barrier that uh, that is in our society and we uh, where we are right now, we think that it is not appropriate. Then it is surpassed by time. It is not. Uh, something to stick on. Uh, uh, if you look at uh, gender policy that we have right now, actually one of the strategies they have is to um, identify these uh, stereotypes that uh, have negative impact mm -hmm. on um, uh, uh, women uh, development and uh, make sure that they address them. So if there are such Migani, uh, Kazi, A, B, C, D, and there are many others, then I think it is high time that we identify them mm -hmm. and uh, uh, actually make sure that we are addressing them accordingly. Because uh, as Dr. Christine did put, it is the world where we are living, it requires all of us to be part of the development. So there is no room for such uh, imigani and other stereotypes that may hinder uh, uh, the development of women and uh, their contribution to the societal uh, growth. And then uh, about the affirmative action that um, Ruth mentioned, well, I'm not sure. Um, Probably I could just give my views, but uh, um, maybe the Minister of Education, they have read the, 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 the research that you made. They also are aware of other factors. If they think it is necessary to put in place affirmative action for um, women to be present in school leadership, maybe they can do that. But um, what I want to say here is that uh, 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 about affirmative actions, there are different uh, schools of thought. Some support affirmative actions, some do not support affirmative actions because of different reasons. I think if you went to, uh, uh, to literatures about this, you would see. But the way I see uh, in education sector, I think we have uh, a good number of women now present. They are teachers, we have a good number of teachers. I think the Minister of Education did put um, a lot of incentives to attract more um, capable students in education, uh, um, in, in teacher training colleges, which means they are going to create a pool from which you can draw um, leaders, uh, both women and, 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 and men. So it, it's actually, I'm, I'm not sure it is the right timing of uh, talking about affirmative action for school leaders, uh, for women. I think the environment is really favorable for them to be able to um, access teacher training colleges, to access teaching positions, and then being capable of competing for the leadership position. I think maybe you need more than affirmative actions, but uh, I'm not ruling it out, but I'm saying uh, depending on the pros and cons of uh, having affirmative actions, maybe it is something that people should look into deeply and explore if it is the only way to go, then they can go that way. If it is not the best way to go, then they can leave it out. Um, <clears throat> then for, yes, I think uh, uh, Witonze was just emphasizing what we said about um, uh, uh, different tips that we gave to women who want to be in leadership position, how they can juggle be among so many responsibilities they have, how they can uh, uh, make sure that they balance uh, the different responsibilities they have and uh, uh, proceed to uh, um, participate in, in leadership. Um, actually, I think that's all I have. Maybe what I can add is that um, in addition to all that we said and all that uh, you saw in, 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 in your research, I think one of the things that we should improve on as women is making sure that we are informed. Information is very, very pertinent because at times we may miss uh, uh, um, chances just because we didn't get the right information at the right time. So actually, uh, because now we have uh, advanced ways ways of getting information, I think we should uh, um, leverage on that and make sure that we are informed in time to be able to participate and, uh, and access everything that we want to. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Actually, where you, I mean, Honorable Member of Parliament, where you have ended is very important. I think one of the teachers pointed out that sometimes I think the person that they are too busy doing other things and some of these positions are online, so they don't get to know that the positions are online. So um, I'm going to do a, um, a, a round of, I mean, I'm going to ask our DOS and our head of department 
your final word of advice to your fellow teachers who want to be a dean of studies like you? What can you tell them as we finish? <coughs> My advice to men is to change our mindset. We can, we can be readers and we are not one pointed oriented. We are multifunction. Thank you very much. Functional, so you can do all the other responsibilities and you can still make it to be a leader following some of the tips that were already given planning, delegating, and all that. Our head of department, what is your final um, word to your fellow teachers who want to be heads of department like you? Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, the female are able, so be confident and try to take a course of leadership and management skills. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So this brings us to an end, and I just want to echo what she said, because we have, we have vice chancellors in the room. We have people who are in charge of writing curriculum for our teacher training in the room. So the question, I think the thing we need to ask ourselves is to what extent do we expose our teachers as we develop them to leadership and management uh, skills because as she has said and as was said by one of the teachers in our earlier discussion not here the teacher said that she failed being her interview or being a dean of study because when she went for that interview most of the questions were on leadership and management and it was not just about teaching and learning so I think there is that challenge to all of us who are working in this space and as AIMS we are going to step into that, working alongside with the other partners, that alongside the pedagogical skills, the content mastery, if we want to see more ladies rising into those positions, we need to find ways of inculcating experiential but also uh, opportunities for them to deepen and master content and skills on leadership and management. So with those many remarks, please help me to thank all our panelists for the very insightful co conversation that we've had. Thank you very much. Thank you. And please clap for ourselves for being very attentive and participating in the conversation. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, I just want to say that for us, part of the reason why we've had this conversation, as we said, we are going to be launching a pilot mentoring program and coaching program for just a pilot set of teachers who have expressed interest in being leaders. So to start it off, we identified them, we, they are in this meeting with their heads of departments, their deans of studies, so that we can ask ourselves what opportunity exists for actual experiential training while they're in school. But the other thing is also just being able to walk the talk. And I think one of the biggest statements that came from our teachers who are currently leaders is that we are able, as female teachers, we need to bring it in our head. We need to visualize it. We need to state it. And we need to step out knowing that we are able. It's not about us waiting to be given, but us stepping out to actually play that role. And I just want to give an example. The AIMS Teacher Training Program is run very closely with the support of teachers. We have teacher leadership at different level, and this is not so much affirmative action, but there's a sense of balance. We have district coordinators, and I know that over 50% of our district coordinators are female teachers, and they've been doing an amazing job coordinating the work that we do across the district, reaching out to their fellow teachers, working with the district leaders, whether it is sector education inspectors and all that. And at the sector level, we also have sector coordinators, and again, over 50% of them are female. And then recently we saw the need to bring in another tier of leadership that is regional coordinators, people who can work with a number of district coordinators to inspire and ensure that our work is being done efficiently. And this was done based on performance. We have four regional coordinators. Three of them are ladies and one of them is a man. So just saying that it is possible, it is true that our female teachers are able 
and we are going to work together to inspire, to encourage, so that we hopefully can see the different numbers, both in teaching and in leading. Now with that, we want to shift very quickly because of time into the next, um, the next part of our program, which was about the scholarship. And there's something one of our uh, teachers said again, that one of the things that stops our teachers, female teachers, to rising to positions is qualifications. We know that there are some qualifications they cannot rise to if you do not have the minimum level, which in this case is the degree. So we would like to submit that the scholarship program that we, are going to, we will be talking about today is one of the initiatives in place we are putting in place as AIMS TTP to contribute to empowering our teachers, including ladies, so that they can, they can actually reach out to, into their aspirations. They do not stop or they are not stopped by their qualifications. So we're going to move very quickly into the, um, into the scholarship program. I'm going to give a little bit of a background of the scholarship program. And then we are going to have um, actually a very important activity, just five minute activity. So my team, please have that ready. We're going to have um, an MOU signing ceremony just to signal that this scholarship program is not an AIMS it is actually a collaborative program with so many institutions outside here and actually so many uh, corporate organizations. And on that note, I want to recognize the presence of additional partners in the house. We have ICDL that is actually playing a key role in helping us empower our teachers to get ICT proficient. That is really critical to their rising into leadership positions. We also have a number of corporate institutions. We have... Um, So we have, um, okay, Airtel is not here with us, but Airtel is one of our partners that we are working with to ensure that our teachers have internet, our teachers have gadgets that can support their teaching and learning at a larger scale. Um, we also have um, RSSB, we, who we really, really want to give a big, big uh, thanks of appreciation. Last year, when we were running our National Teacher Appreciation Campaign, we had this whole campaign train for almost a week and uh, I think on social media we were able to reach over three million people talking about the value of teachers we had the hashtag Mwari Mwanji but we also said after celebrating the teachers let's appreciate them and so we rallied corporate institutions to come forth and contribute to the AIMS TTP corporate scholarship fund and one of the institutions that really stepped forward massively to contribute to that corporate scholarship fund was RSSB. So I would like to uh, ask the representative of RSSB who is here to actually stand so that we can recognize you. We got the biggest check from them. So it's important that they are here today because we are here because part of it is because of their contribution. Um, so the in our midst, we have uh, 43 teachers who have been selected. I want to say that we received 345 applications of teachers who have A0, A1, and would like to get to upgrade to A0. That is, they have a diploma, they would like to become, uh, get their degrees. Unfortunately, and it's not unfortunate because you have to start somewhere, from the little money we had, we could only sponsor 43 teachers. Majority of them, if not all of them, are in the house today. Now, the other teachers, of course, are still expectant, and we look forward to working with our other institutions to make more teachers. And I think it's going to be possible because just today we got one extra partner, not fully on board, but we got a signal through an email from Mount Kenya University that they are keen to work with us so that they could also offer some potentially partial scholars scholarships and full scholarships and that means the little money we have could easily sponsor a few more teachers so in the coming days we might have another 10 teachers perhaps being identified from the pool to join the 42 teachers so it is something it is work in progress and um, to start us off um, um, I'm told that um, our we know that we have our honorable honorable minister for state minister for secondary and primary education and because he has to run somewhere he was going to make closing remarks but i think um we are going to perhaps invite him to um 
to make his remarks now as we set the place for signing the MOU between Ames and two institutions. We will be signing an MOU today between Ames and Kibogora University and also between Ames and UTAP. The two universities have come on board very massively. They are offering us six full scholarships, 10 partial scholarships, that's 50%, both from Kibogora and UTAP. So that means between the two of them, we can sponsor 22 full scholarship. So please, let's clap for them. And thank you very much for that <laughs> ceremony between the three institutions. But before we do that, because of time and we don't want to miss out on the remarks by the Honorable Honor Minister of State, I would like to take this opportunity to invite our Minister of State to come and make some remarks on the agenda for today, the issues of leadership, and of course, the issues of supporting our teachers to continue with their professional development. Thank you. Yes. Another clap as it comes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you, uh, even if I'm not going to close this because I still have uh, uh, some work to do. Um, so, but I am very happy to be uh, to be here uh, for the celebration of the AIMS uh, teacher uh, training program, female science teachers um, uh, celebration. Uh, and uh, I have to say that this is in line with uh, the promotion of girls and women's education uh, because, of course, there is a high need to ensure, that the to ensure the participation and successful completion of girls and women uh, in, the fields of, in the fields related to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And you know that the Ministry of Education has been putting in place uh, different policies and strategies to ensure that we bring all the stakeholders together uh, and ensure that we are giving equal chances, chances to our girls and boys to be able to participate at all levels of our education. And I want to highly uh, appreciate the interventions of the AIMS through their teacher training programs uh, because, of course, as I said, they, they are in line with the vision of the Ministry of Promoting Roles, Role Models uh, in Education, Women Role Models in Education, and uh, of Girls' Education. Of course, uh, we need more. Uh, we need to do more in terms of attracting uh, women uh, in leadership positions in our schools, because as we heard uh, on the panel, when we have more women in leadership positions, especially in our schools, our schools do better and uh, we get uh, better outcomes and we all become better for that. So uh, I think uh, this is a point well taken uh, and we will, uh, of course, as the Ministry of Education, keep putting in place different policies and strategies and to ensure that women uh, we give our women uh, a chance to be able to participate in our education sector because uh, this is what science tells us that it is a good investment for us to do uh, and we will keep uh, doing everything that we can to make sure that happens. Uh, you know that uh, we also have um, different uh, programs as the a member of parliament who was here uh, mentioned we have different programs at the Ministry of Education to attract uh, more people towards uh, the teaching profession. Uh, you know that uh, we have put in place uh, a scholarship program uh, to support uh, children who or to support students who want to go into the teaching profession. Uh, for now we support every, every student who chooses to go into the teacher training colleges, the government of Rwanda pays 50% of their tuition fees. 
So this is something that we have done to ensure that uh, the best students can be, can be able to participate, to come uh, into the teaching profession. So this is a program that we have done. We have been doing it for, uh, I believe, two years, and we are going to continue to do so to ensure that uh, the teachers, we want to come uh, and we want them to come and teach. We want them to come and contribute to the education of our children. So uh, it is high time that we also recognize that as a government, we need to do uh, part, uh, or we need to do our part to incentivize them and to give them uh, everything that they need to be able to do the job that we ask them to do. So uh, in addition to the 50% uh, of the scholarships that we give to our um, uh, teacher students in the teacher training colleges, we also offer free scholarships uh, to university. So for teachers who want to upgrade uh, from A1 to A0, or uh, yes, from the teachers who want to upgrade from uh, A1 to A0, but also from A2 to A1. So, uh, and as you know, we have around, uh, uh, in the first year, we offered 300 scholar free school, meaning that we are going to have around 600 uh, teachers who go to the University of Rwanda College of Education on free scholarship. So, and these are the schemes that we are going to, co to, to continue to do uh, because we want our teachers to be able to get into this profession, of course, through when we pay 50% of their tuition fees for them to go to TTCs. After the TTCs, the TTCs, they are going to come into the education sector, teach for a while, and then some of them get an opportunity to have scholarships uh, to go uh, to your uh, university to get their diplomas and degrees. Uh, and we are going to continue that scheme up until our teachers get master's degrees. So this is a journey that we are on, uh, and they are going to continue to do uh, to make sure that as many teachers as possible get access to those opportunities. Uh, and of course, we also keep to ensure that these opportunities are equally um, distributed and to make sure that uh, women and uh, men. I also want to thank uh, the AIMS uh, teacher uh, uh, training program because uh, some of you know that last week uh, we had a symposium for girls. It's a, a symposium that was organized uh, by BLF uh, and uh, the Rwanda Basic Education Board. And we talked about different ideas on how to promote women uh, in education, especially in the in leadership positions. Uh, and I want to thank AIMS uh, TTP because what you are doing now is basically implementing what we just talked about last week. So uh, we may talk about ideas, we may talk about different programs, but this will remain ideas if they are not implemented. So what AIMS is doing now is to actually uh, walk the talk and make sure that some of, uh, of these uh, women, uh, these brave women, uh, get a chance to uh, uh, to, to start their journey towards uh, leadership positions in education. And I really, really want to thank AIMS uh, for doing this. Uh, and I hope that with all the partners in this room, we can continue to partner and do more towards the promotion of, uh, of uh, women uh, in education, in the education sector. Uh, as I close, I also want to um, uh, have uh, uh, a few words towards what was said here. Um, and I want to start by thanking um, the women who are who were on this panel. And these are uh, women who have been, uh, some of them have been in the education sector for a while, and we all have benefited for their contribution. Uh, and we have, uh, we had also women who are in current uh, leadership positions in our schools. And you heard from uh, what they said, um, uh, they, they, of course, they are conscious, conscious of, uh, of, of, of the problems uh, that they may encounter in, uh, in, uh, while uh, they are leading uh, in schools, but they also have solutions. So you had them uh, encouraging uh, their fellow women to, uh, to step up, to uh, continue to improve uh, themselves, uh, but to also uh, be able to make decisions, uh, be able to 
uh, to improve their schools. And uh, this is something that we all appreciate and we would want to have as many uh, opportunities as possible to have uh, women uh, come here and tell us what they are doing to uh, create conducive environments uh, for uh, our children in our schools. And we also had uh, about the different uh, policy options uh, that we all talked about here. There was uh, a discussion around uh, remuneration, a uh, discussion around uh, different responsibilities that are given to uh, the director, deputy directors of studies and discipline. This is something that we know. Uh, we know that uh, when we ask uh, our teachers to take more responsibilities and go more into a leadership role, uh, we are giving them more work to do, we are giving them more responsibilities, uh, and we recognize that this needs to, ca to go with uh, some of the incentives that we offer to uh, our, our teachers. So this is something that you have been actively looking at, uh, and uh, it is uh, a problem it is uh, something that we would want to solve uh, once we get an opportunity to do so. Um, and um, uh, there are also uh, other uh, policies uh, that were uh, talked about on how do we increase uh, uh, access uh, to the leadership positions uh, for women. Uh, but again, what I would want to say is that uh, I want to echo some of the colleagues who are here on the panel that women are capable. They are capable of doing this. Uh, and case in point, uh, I have uh, a very good opportunity now to work with two incredible women at the Ministry of Education. You know that our Minister of Education uh, and uh, my colleague, Minister in charge of uh, ICT and TV, they are women. Uh, and they are leading the sector and a sector that has many women who are uh, into uh, teaching positions. You know that we have uh, many, uh, we have more than half of the teaching workforce in primary school are women. Um, and uh, this is, uh, and you know that uh, primary schools, this is where we build foundations for uh, our, our entire education sector. So meaning that we have more than half of the teaching workforce in an area where uh, we are building foundations for our education sector. So. Um, which means we can safely say that our education sector rests on the shoulders of women. So we need to be able to support them. We need to be able to uh, make sure that um, we amplify their abilities uh, to lead us in, that, uh, in this area. So uh, women, are, uh, women are capable, and what we need to do is to make sure that uh, we increase opportunities for them to enter the door, because we know that uh, they, once they get there, uh, they do wonders. So this is uh, a conversation that we are going to continue to have, uh, and I call upon everyone here to uh, keep increasing these opportunities for us to sit down and discuss what we can do to attract as many women as possible in the leadership positions, especially in education. Once again, I want to thank uh, AIMS uh, the, through uh, their teacher training programs for uh, doing incredible work uh, that they do uh, in, in training, uh, in making sure that uh, our teachers um, are able to deliver uh, on what we ask them to do. Uh, but I also want to thank them for being innovative. So every time when I talk to uh, the head of the teacher training programs, she always have new ideas on uh, what to do. Uh, especially in education. She has ideas on how we can encourage our, our young people to go, to go uh, into STEM. She always has uh, different ideas on how we can thank our teachers. So this is, uh, this is a program that we are very proud of. It's a program that we are, we are very happy about. Uh, and I want you all to, um, to help me and thank uh, the AIMS through their teacher training programs because it is a program that's doing uh, very good uh, things in education. Uh, and uh, again, uh, I also want to invite uh, our teachers, uh, especially female teachers, to uh, uh, keep doing what they are doing. You are doing uh, amazing things in our schools. 
uh, and you do not need to be in a leadership position to be able to lead right because obviously we know that leadership starts before leadership uh, positions these positions what they do uh, they just give us more tools uh, to be able to lead uh, but uh, every time that you are doing what you are supposed to do every time that you are improving yourself every time that you are helping others you are leading so i would encourage uh, women uh, especially our women teachers to keep doing that to continue leading even if you are not in, the, in that, the leadership positions but i will also argue that this is how the journey starts so you start by lead, being a leader where you are and eventually we end up in a leadership position and when 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 you get there you will get more tools to continue to impact the education sector so thank you very much uh, i thank you for 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 coming here i thank you for the invitation uh, and I encourage all the women who are going to get, I congratulate uh, all the women who are going to get the scholarships here. Uh, and uh, I hope that when you get these scholarships, when you get these opportunities to keep improving yourselves, you stay in the education sector, right? So because we want, we want you to uh, go uh, get your degrees, but we also have to tell you that uh, we need you. We need you to come back to the education sector and continue to build upon what uh, uh, others uh, are doing. Uh, and I hope that as we continue to do this, we will also get more opportunities to support more women uh, to uh, be better at uh, this uh, job or this calling of teaching, this calling of educating for Rwanda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister of State, uh, for the and for the encouraging uh, for encouraging our women and teachers and uh, for the vote of thanks to AIMS and other stakeholders and partners. In uh, thank you very much. Uh, because of time, we would have more of that and uh, more of energetic vibes. But I'm going to call upon uh, AIMS, uh, representative of AIMS, the center president uh, for the signing of the MOU to come forward. Uh, with AIMS coming forward, uh, the first partner to sign the MOU is going to be Chibogora Nick. So the representative of Chibogora Technique should also join uh, the center president on the stage. Nibyo tuzi kukuboko gutanga kurusha ukwakira umugisha ariko no gutanga twaguha amashyi.
the signing as a door to more of us to upgrade our education standards and uh, to build uh, personally and personally for most of us. Nuruji, Ruchingu, Kuribama, Muritwe, Gaba Jacu, and Jerry Romani. Romani, Bugamish, Gufasha, Abo, Dushins, Gokurira, Kudirango, to Vatez and Berekush. A much menshi to the Vice Chancellor, Chugora Pumek. Uh, next is going to be UTAB, uh, the representative, representative for, from UTAB can come and uh, send the memorandum of understanding. Amashi Mesha Ne Kurichi Bogora Na UTAB Biju Sangahano. Mwesuko muri hano mubaye abagabo kuri aya masezerano y'ubufatanye mu guteza imbere mwarimu na mwarimu kazi kugira ngo dushobe guteza imbere ireme ry'uburezi Amashchan Chan Barakoze. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Sam Yala and uh, Representative from Chibogura Polytechnic and UTAB for signing the MOU. And uh, Kinyarwanda, we say to go create each other in a band. Rakoze ko each other in a band. Now, Gungan Fasha could young go to convey to each other in a band to be gender. Di tu kanib juwa kurguanda tkuishi matu kaderemba hany matu kajina. Tkuishi matu kaderemba hany matu kajina kangu ka. Yara buze, yara buze, mutu. No, no, I go. 
Ku fatanye ekwesi mehigo Arakoze cyane barakoze cyane gufatanya na Ems kugira ngo twese mihigo Please ka nakire Erin kugira ngo adu adukomeza nyina yo kugikurikira Okay, so now we are coming to the end of our ceremony, and this is uh, actually the, the icing of the cake, which is being able to call out the teachers who are getting their scholarship, uh, provisional scholarship uh, awards, and we're saying provisional because um, one, the teachers have to successfully apply to the universities and be admitted to the courses, and then based on that, they now get their, um, their full scholarship award. Uh, we just want to outline that um, the scholarship is a limited scholarship. It's only covering tuition scholarship, uh, the tuition fee. But this has been discussed with the teachers. And the reason for that was that we wanted to spread the we wanted as many teachers to benefit. Remember, we said over 345 teachers applied for scholarship to move from A one diploma level to degree level. Now, as I mentioned, based on continued conversations, we see uh, an opportunity that perhaps in another one week after we have uh, had discussions with additional institutions, that it may be possible to exp or to increase the number of um, those who are getting scholarships from A1 to A0 uh, by a certain number. And we're really, really hopeful those of us who are listening from home, I know last weekend was a very difficult weekend. Some people were extremely excited that uh, they got the scholarship, and of course, there were those who really um, were crestfallen that they did not get the scholarship. I want to give a little bit of a background of how did we pick the 42 teachers out of the 345 teachers. First of all, our tech as TTP is that every teacher qualifies. The fact that the teacher is a teacher and is actually giving their all into the schools, it, every teacher qualifies actually to benefit from, um, from this. However, we were faced with a difficult situation of having to select um, a few. So as I said, uh, just giving a background from last year, we, we, we initiated the campaign uh, for the Ames um, Corporate Scholarship Fund, and a few institutions came uh, I mean, we were able to in contribute to the kitty. A number of institutions expressed interest, but the, 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 time, the time was short for them to actually uh, come forth because that was December. So there are a number of institutions that we're still having conversations with. But even those that actually extended their hand and put something in the kitty, we are also still talking to them to see if they can actually give more. So as much as we appreciated RSSB for actually donating 10 million Rwandan francs into the kitty, and uh, that was the highest uh, amount that we got. We really appreciate that. I think I was, I told you some day that nowadays when I put to the RSSB building, I put for a few seconds. There's a sense of connection because I remember the 10 million in our kitty, and more importantly, I remember the teachers who are excited and smiling and going back to school. So it's our hope that, uh, yes, you can clap for RSSB. It is our hope, and I know RSSB has really indicated that this is something that they're really, it's not, it was not a by the way. It is something they feel connected to. So I believe in our subsequent conversations, we hopefully will be getting more from RSSB. But we also had Airtel, we had KCB put into the kitty. And so at, by the end of last year, we only, I mean, we had a total of 19 million Rwandan francs. You know, even when you have 1 billion, you say only. So we had 19 million Rwanda francs only, but that is substantial because it's better than zero. And as I said, also to this kitty, very important is a contribution coming from the institution. So from the two institutions, we've been able to secure an equivalent of 22 scholarships because there are six full scholarships and 10 partial scholarships. So if you make the 10 partial into five, it's an equivalent of 11, 11. So that's really exciting. Um, and then AIMS, within its own um, system, has been able to look for uh, some fund, and I know we are together up to 30 million Rwandan francs for this year. 
So that is adding into the kitty. And as I said, we are talking to other institutions. So Mount Kenya University sent an email today morning and they said, these are areas we're interested in. Let's sit down and have a discussion. So hopefully by the end of the week, we'll have concluded that. So you can see it is work in progress. And all the other corporates listening to us who will, uh, who will hear about this, please come along because we always say we are because of our teachers. So how did we select the 42? So first of all, um, we had 345 uh, um, we separated masters, those who applied for masters, around 100, and those who, uh, who applied for upgrade from diploma. We are yet to look into the master's scholarships. And when we do that, we hope that from a little bit of the savings and partnerships with institutions such as MKU, URCE, we will be able to hope starting, start off with less than 10 or up to 10. So we are really hopeful. But for the A1, to A0, we had our champion teachers. Every district, we have three champion teachers. We invited the champion teachers to Kigali. In Ames TTP, nothing happens without the teachers. So the champion teachers were invited into Kigali. We have champion teachers from different districts, Gishumbi, uh, Ngororero, Rusizi, the 14 districts. And so what we did, because the teachers uh, submitted their application online, it was a Google form with and also a number of the questions were asking for evidence. So if you said you did this, you have a diploma, submit your transcript. If you say you are a head of department, submit a, um, a letter from your head teacher saying something about who you are so that we can actually corroborate what you're saying. So our champion teachers came into Kigali for two days and they sat down to comb through the applications. Of course, we wanted to ensure there was no biasness, so what we did the champion teachers did not check through the applications from their districts. So the applicants were grouped according to districts. So applicants from Gisagara, applicants from Nyaruguru, like that. And then this was then given to the champion teachers. So no champion teacher from their district evaluated applications from their district. Now before that, we looked at what are some of the rubrics, first level of rubrics we want to evaluate. So first of all, of course, was to confirm that this teacher is from the 14 districts. We had to confirm, we had to look for uh, the transcripts showing that indeed this teacher has a diploma. We also had to look at um, other areas to actually see what kind of teacher is this? Well, how much effort are you already putting in teaching? How much recognition is already there? So we looked, for example, has this teacher been awarded any certificate uh, of recognition in terms of their performance as a teacher? Now, we know that in the system, we normally have sector level awards, we have district level awards, we have provincial level awards, and we have national level awards. So the teachers had been asked that question, and we wanted to see if there's evidence. We also wanted, of course, in that set, we also looked at in tandem, if this teacher had received any AIMS teacher awards, because we have had two award ceremonies in 2020 and 2021. We also wanted to look at possibly to gauge the levels of socioeconomic status, because part of the reason one is given a scholarship is to actually support in terms of it's, an, it's to support financially, that you are not able to raise the finances. And so this scholarship is helping you raise the finances. That was a difficult one. We ask for slips, but again, those who have A1, we earn almost at the same level. So one other thing that we looked at, it's a little subjective, but we said at least it gives us a, a level. We looked at, is this teacher single? Is this teacher married? Um, why? Because we assume that if a teacher is married and has a family, it means that whatever he or she is earning at their A1 has to be used for the family. So in other words, there's a greater sense of responsibility. I know it is subjective because sometimes you can be single and you're actually taking care of members of your family. But we also looked at some of those. Now, their champion teachers using some of these rubrics were able to award marks. And for every application was evaluated by two groups. So if the Kayonza applicants were being evaluated by Gishumbi, they were also evaluated by District 2, which is, let's say, Nyaruguru. And then later, the two groups came together to compare and to see whether the marks that given every individual applicant was actually tally. Now, based on that, there was some sense of ranking, and we got the best applicants from each district. But the following week, 
our staff members went through some of the areas. So you said you actually are ahead. Um, you said you have gotten an award before. The, the AIMS TTP team members then looked at the top 10 to actually look at the, the evidence that had been attached. Is there evidence that can actually support what you have put or what you have ticked in the option? So there was a little bit of checking. And then we went to the next level to say, okay, we, want, we brought in other levels. So does this person already hold a responsibility in school? Is this person already a head of department? Uh, is this person playing another role in the school? Again, looking at the letters that your head teacher submitted as recommendations and your dose, we were able to look at that and be able to identify. And then there were also letters that you were given by your AIMS district coordinators. Because you are getting this scholarship as an AIMS TTP member. So we wanted to get a sense of, is this teacher an active participant in our training? School-based training, district-based training, some of the remote trainings. So all these are some of the factors that we use to come up. And then we had a conversation with our champion teachers and we said, look, we want to give scholarships, not just for the sake of the teacher. We are giving scholarships to impact the quality of teaching and learning of mathematics and sciences in our schools. So we looked at the, we are having applications from four subjects, mathematics, physics, chemistry, and biology. So based on the conversation, we were able to establish that we have fewer teachers, for example, in physics. And we are also able to establish that there's higher demand, there's increasing demand in, for mathematics teachers, given the current policies that seem not to measure with the supply. So what we did is the female applicants were all put together based on their combination. So a teacher who, according to their transcript, would go for training for maths and physics, they were all put together despite their district, the top five from each district. Those who wanted to teach biology and chemistry, or combination would be biology and chemistry. Those who had maths and computer science. Those who had, um, I think we had some people who had physics and chemistry. So the total number of scholarships that were given for teachers who are going to do physics, especially for the female, was higher than the total number of scholarships that were given for teachers who were asking to go and do biology and chemistry. Not because biology and chemistry are not important, but because from the data we have and the feedback we have, we have much fewer teachers for physics, especially the ladies. And then the overall, the overall uh, criteria which is captured there was that 60% of these scholarships were to go to the females. You saw the demand on female teachers is higher in our schools. Remember, the data suggested that an A1 teacher, three times the number of A1 male teachers are given an opportunity to teach at A level compared to the female teachers. And even at degree level, we still have a massive number of male teachers being given the opportunity to teach at A level compared to the female teacher. So it means qualifications mean a lot for our teachers. It's like they have to work an extra, extra hard to actually get these opportunities to rise in their teaching because if they're only teaching all level, again, that is a limitation. And of course, we know there's also, we don't have as many female maths and science teachers as male. So we came to a decision that 60% of this were going to be female and the other 40 are going to be male. So that's a little bit of a summary of the process through which we selected. I need to say that there were some special awardees. Those teachers who are already playing a critical role in TTP, we had around four teachers who are champion teachers and they do not have a degree. But they've been doing an amazing job working with us, putting extra time to coordinate our activities. So all the champion teachers, we just had about three of them, who had um, a, a, A1 were actually given a scholarship. We also had considered giving scholarship to teachers from special needs schools. However, the one that we selected later turned out that that teacher actually has a degree and actually had applied for masters. So she will be considered amongst during the masters process. And then there were a few special cases. I think there was one 
particular special case of our sector coordinator ahead of the parents who had a specific issue about their qualification and it was submitted. So we had around five teachers get scholarships based on special considerations, some of which I have outlined. But the others, that was a process of selecting. All the teachers actually deserve to get scholarships. We know that it is always not possible to give scholarships to 100% of the teachers. So one of the things we're doing as TTP through one of our, our partners, we have been approached by a partner called Chansen International. Chansen International is in the country. They normally give loans to students going for uh, higher learning. They've been working with only two institutions. They give loans. They pay for your school fees. You do your, your school fees. And then after graduating, you come up with a payment mechanism uh, through, um, that is workable for the person. So we have been in conversation with them. They have been our partners during the awards. And uh, recently they came forward and said, because of the value of what the teachers are doing, they, we will be discussing and exploring possibilities of Chansen International coming forth, working with us and some of our, the universities that we, are, we have a uh, partnership with to sponsor specifically AIMS TTP teachers, those who are interested to get a loan to have their um, upgrade. They are, they're currently, they are just looking at A1 to A0. So those who want to upgrade from diploma to degree. So we will be, we are still in discussion, but very soon we'll be having that. So some teachers who are interested will be able to step forth. There will be a mechanism around it so that these teachers can have their school fees paid no worries about it. They finish their, their, their training, and after finishing their training, um, there's a payment process that is arrived at. So the main goal is to get as many of our teachers empowered through improving their qualifications, especially those who have diplomas, who are passionate about education, and just need a boost to ensure they get the right qualification that could allow them to grow within the education sector. So all these are part of the plan, so quite a bit coming up. So now we want to give the letters. We have very basic letters to the scholarship companies, and we just want to call some of our guests here so that they can read out the names of the, the scholarship awardees, and then the scholarship awardees will come and get their letters, and they will stand here, and we'll end with a photo session, and that will bring us to the end of the session, of course, with a vote of thanks from the teachers. So the first person that I'm going to call to call some of the first teachers, I mean, I mean, some of the teachers who are going to get their scholarships, this is in no order. It does not mean you're going to any particular university. This is a very provisional letter. The real letter is going to come after you get your admission. And I must say, I want to thank university, uh, Kibogora University. They have said they're going to expedite the admission process for all the students going to Kibogora. I believe we are going to have the same conversation with the vice chancellor so that we can submit a list and the process of Admission is expedited so long as you have the right transcripts and documents that are required for your admission. So that we see some of our teachers going to school next week because this is a school-based program. They do not stop teaching. They go to school during holidays and now we are on holiday. So on that note, I want to invite the Vice Chancellor of Utah, please, if you could come forward and read the names of the first... Um, some of the teacher awardees who will come and receive their letters from you, and they will stand here as they wait for the others to be called. So just yes. the name. Okay. We call Al Aline Wanyirigira, dear Aline Wanyirigira, please. Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations. So, in, in, okay. We have Emeline Niodusenga. <laughs> Emeline, congratulations. Okay, please. Again, Hana, you know. <laughs> okay. 
We have Ingabire Marie Rose. Ingabire Marie Rose. Congratulations, Ingabire. Ni Grimoué, Céline, Céline, Congratulations, Céline. We have Hilary in Iran Sabimana. Hilary, congratulations. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, minute. Uh, finally, Savayesu Valence. Valence Savayesu. Congratulations, Valence. Yeah. Yeah. The second session, holiday at your tab today so if you want if you are able hmm, to go you could <laughs> begin with that us but uh, it depends on you so welcome your tab is in Gichumbi district in the northern U province you know so we are happy of you so the country this is society needs you and improve yourself thank you very much Thank you very much, Vice Chancellor Yutab. Uh, I think now uh, you've got uh, your ticket to your uh, to your tab. Uh, thank you and congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Uh, cameraman, please. Uh, let us hold them facing the camera. To hold them like this. Mozrebe Shemri camera a little is Fabien Ategekimana.
Alois Mugabo Windekwe. Olivier Niri Shema. Ambajimana Dian Grace Mukamurego. Abimana aimable. Donata Sibonang. Janeti Nzaisenga. ndi barakoze uh, na babonye scholarships uh, turakurikizaho honorable Chantal Mbakishimana kujaza dufashe gutanga scholarships
Clementine Ozamukunda. Gedeo Izavayo. Dieu donné, Mounye Kawa. Congratulations. Thanks. Solange Mukanda Isabye. Amasa haya dufashe tuja jize kui hota. Esta Nyanda Ishimie. Masa uja kutu kuhutisha. Mokore ngi nore. Clementine, oui, Zeymana, et ma moukanzi gie, Delphine, nawe awe yi tegour. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you and congratulations. Robert Bajeneza Juvenal Kwahirgwa Brandine Nirahabimana Roberta Aisha Chie Alexis Mugabo Fit Ndaza gusaba honorable Alice uh, kujira ngo aze uh, tukwa wadinjile scholarships.
Minga nzima Letitia. Beata Aingeneye. Robert Bagenez. Juvenal Twahirba. Blandine uh, Nilhabiman. Congratulations. Uh, Liberata Aishati. Congratulations. Alexis Mogawufite. I wish you all success for the journey you're going to start. Narakoze cyane honorable Chantal na honorable Alice abakurikira nabo abazi imbere. Françoise Mukashaka. Rutayisile Emmanuel. André Benoît Remera. Solange Wizeimana. Jikundiro Noela, Vicent Vincent Nezidiaya, Fabien Fratzinze. Ndaza Gusava, representative of MasterCard, Ruth Koza, the Fasha Gutanga Scholarships. Is Ruth in the house? Oh. Ruth is not here, allowed to skip that. Uh, Sir President, Center President, uh, Professor Samyala came and help us uh, give the certificates. So, Françoise uh, Mukashiaka. Ruta Isire Emmanuel. André Benoît Remera. Solange Ouesiyimana. Gikundiro Noela. Vincent Tesiriayo. Fabien Turatzinze. Thank you very much, uh, Center President Ames Rwanda. Now, uh, as I call the following individual to come and get uh, their certificate, allowing them to have the scholarship, uh, 
I call upon Master Kadi Representative Ruth to give the certificates. Karita Skaneza, please come forward. Sylvie Sinjira Ngabo. Josiane Tuishim. Marielle Izere. Marielle Izere. Thank you very much. You'll have to read the name to, to know who's getting close to you. The microphone is here. Caritas. Sliven. Josiane Tuishime. Um, Muriel Gizere. Thank you very much, Ruth. Uh, for the last but not the last batch, we have Holance Rolance Winez, Marie Chantal Namab, Jean Damoulin Senjiman, Martine Oyez. And for this group, I will ask. Uh, the RSSB representative to come and help us with the session. Martin Wayezu, Jean Damol Sengimana, Marie Chantal. Then Lolance Winige. Uh, we thank RSSB for this session and the generosity. Uh, Tulajinda tuga na kumusozo, uh, nda sabako uh, tuza kujejuru, tuga fata ifotoyuru gibutso, tukwese, uh, bamgeko tuza kuzimbele hanga. As we wind, we're going to have uh, a photo from memorabilia and uh, from what I get from the camera people and uh, the media people, we'll have it from here. After that, we'll have lunch served at the hotel wing and we'll have the ushers directing us there. Ako mbele yuko tujira honga wa tujie kubanza, tuneze rugujo tubonye.
ifoto ngo bambwiye ko hano biza kugorana tuza kwifatira kuri escalier ari Ako mbere yuko ibyo biba nko narimbabwiye igikorwa kibaye niki kunezerwa kandi gishimishije nago twagenda tutabanje kukizihiza akabari muri ubwo buryo nza kubasaba kumfasha kugira ngo tukizihize twishimire bagenzi bacu bagiye kongera ubumenyi mbere yuko tubikorana none tujye gusaba umwe les femmes politiciennes Thank you very much. Um, Liberata Ahisha Chiel. Coming from Musanze District. First of all, I thank government of Uganda to support and promote girls in education. I thank you very much, MZ TTP, to support me or to give opportunity of continuing my study. I never had as a woman. I come to, I study hard well in order to become a greater future leader. Thank you very much, Emuzi. Thank you very much, Government of Uganda. Thank you very much, especially Dr. Helen, who supports women and you continue the study. Long life, math and science teachers. Long life, EMS, TTP, Uganda. Long life, Dr. Helen. May God bless you. Thank you. Arakoze cyane akuyandi mashi kwa shimiye twese. Ndumva ibyo cyiteranje hangaha tugiye kugira ku musozo. Igisigaye no kujya gufata ifoto y'urwibutso no kujya gufata amafunguro. Muko twabwiye harabaza kutuyobora. Ah uh, thank you very much for your presence, everyone, and your support to AIMS teacher training program and AIMS at large and the support you always lend uh, to, you always render to teachers and education. At this moment, I'm going to let Freddy and the team, with the help of the ASHA, show us where we're going to take a photo from. Uh, the people missed on the registration are going to follow and see Anatoly will help and uh, the rest will go to to the photo session. I'm going to uh, welcome Dr. Herin to 
say her last word that will uh, help us get uh, home and get to our places. Ndabona uko yose dukonje mu giye kumfasha tubanze tu ndebe uko byagenze naho buri umwaje. Aba no Maria Dr. Irene, please. Hi, just before we leave, I just thought it is uh, very important for us to know the whole TTP family. Uh, what we have seen here, of course, is the work of, please have a seat, is the work of a whole team working together. And uh, I just want to, I know we recognized uh, the presence of AIMS uh, staff, mem uh, staff members were here, but I want to specifically call out the AIMS TTP team members so that we know them. Uh, uh, because this and everything going on is as a result of us working together as a team. So our very able, I'll start with our very able MC, who is our subject matter specialist for biology and chemistry and also our community outreach officer. That's Mark Valente. So that's Mark. I'm going to call all of us, uh, MSTTP members, please come forward. Uh, sometimes our teachers interact with you on WhatsApp, but they don't know your faces. So, and also to just thank you for all the great work. It's a big team uh, working together and making things happen. So, um, so next to Mark is our communication officer, Freddie, uh, who's been running around making sure everything communication. Yes, Gilbert. Uh, and next to Mark, in the best suit of the day, is our program manager, Crispus Muhire. All of us know Crispus because he's the man to watch if you want to make sure everything is working. Next to Crispus is just all the survey forms that you receive asking you for all the data. That's just, just you want to wave to the people. <laughs> um, Crispus, you want to wave just in case they didn't see you. Who has the best suit? That's Crispus, our, uh, our, our manager. Um, and then next to Just is uh, Florence. She takes care of us. She ensures that everything is going on very well. So that's Florence. Uh, thank you, Florence. Florence, please wave to the people. This is the only time you get to wave to people. Eh? And then we have Jalene. She's really enjoying um, Shanana today. So Jalene, please uh, say hi to the people. We have our IT person, our IT, IT analyst and IT training officer always talking to you about ICDL, following you up to register. Like now, we are registering teachers for ICDL, please note, it's really, really important. So that is Eric, Eric in charge of IT. And then we have uh, one of our newest team members, but also one of the oldest team members. Uh, that is Gilbert. Gilbert is in charge of logistics and support, Gilbert. And then we have um, the final person who is running down. And uh, no, we have, uh, uh, Natalie is not here with us. Uh, she's a liaison officer, always making sure that you're taken care of, your transport issues, everything is taken care of. So we have um, also, very well suited today. Um, Daniel, you want to move this way so that they, you don't waste that. Uh, so that is Daniel. Daniel is also a subject matter specialist for physics and mathematics and also our community outreach officer. So these, uh, we are missing a Natalie in the team. And then we have people who are actually members of this team, even though they are not members of the team, but they are actually critical. Nothing moves. So I want also to just recognize one of our staff members. She doesn't think she's TTP, but she's TTP, and that's Solange. Solange? Solange makes sure that we are taken care of all the logistics. We can move around. We can reach your districts, and everything is working very well. So just thought it was really important. And as, as I stand here, I also want to recognize the presence of our champion teachers, the teachers on the ground. They're the ones who make sure we can reach you 
we can collect data if we wanted it in 30 minutes we will get it and everything is moving in our districts and sectors so i want all the champion teachers wherever you are please just stand up so that we can see you we have three around 40 champion teachers please stand up wherever you are champion teachers very quickly let's clap for them so now these are the people who really drive the work we cannot do anything without these champion teachers and they're normally remain standing they're normally supported by sector coordinators so if you're a sector coordinator and you are in the house please stand up also sector coordinators thank you thank you very much so this is what the team that is working behind the scene to make sure everything is working and i just thought it was important to introduce all of us and i want to thank you again remember the teachers here the head teachers here the doses here our sector education inspectors who are here our deal who is here and all our other leaders who are listening online we value you and we know that we can only move because we are working together let's continue with that spirit and with the spirit of mawe mawe karambe so thank you very much after this we are going for photos and then we make sure you have your ticket for lunch and let's have a good afternoon as we have the photos immediately we'll usher our key guests for lunch as we still organize the others so over to our communication officer thank you guys Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I have, we have asked our protocol team to help us usher the people uh, inside the room for a photo opportunity outside. Uh, outside there are stairs where we are going to take a photo for today. And then after that we will all together head to, for lunch. And anyone who have missed for registration, there is a desk right at the entrance. They can pass by and register themselves. Thank you. So let's all thank you very much, all our key guests. It was very nice having all of us. Thank you for spending time with us, all of us from the different institutions right now to mark this day. We'd like to request all of us to move out to the stairs. We are going to have a group photo. I am told we'll be able to fit in one photo. So let's all move out and then we are going to have a group photo and then we are going to usher some of our key guests for lunch as we remain behind with the teachers. Thank you and have a good afternoon as you travel back home or back to your institutions. Murakoze Chane. Bonne fête à toutes les femmes travailleuses, les femmes politiciennes et les femmes journalistes. Bonne fête, ba mama ya Zando. Oye ba la mukakana tongwe. Bonne fête à toutes les enseignantes. Bonne fête na ba mama ya Les femmes politiciennes et les femmes journalistes. Bonne fête, ba mama ya Zando. Oye ba la mukakana tongwe. Bonne fête à toutes les enseignantes. Bonne fête na ba mama ya Armenios. Bonne fête na Binoé. Bonne fête à toutes les femmes pasteurs et artistes. Ba mama wa. Bonne fête à toutes les femmes travailleuses. Bonne fête à toutes les femmes pasteurs.